Today we have DXBL Season 3. We got some, uh, I do believe I gotta go on this file for it. Yeah, we got some middleweight action today. Middleweight is, um, the 2997 stack cap. I guess I can show you guys. Middleweight division. 2997 total stack cap. No individual stack cap and stats at 100 or less don't count towards the cap. This is basically the, the format they play in Japan. It's a fun format. It's one of the older ones. Uh, there's lots of room for, you know, matchup shenanigans and stuff like that. But today we got 62 people. We're going to do our best to get through all of it. I think we can. I think we can maybe make it happen. Um, but just as a note, if I were to run uh, predictions on everything, 32 takes four hours we got almost double that we're too short to double that so fast forward the whole way and no um no predictions till top 16 but uh we're gonna try and get this done we got shape of lamer and quack attack up first i guess i gotta actually go to the screen no monsters were found. It helps if I spell it right. Heavyweight is next, yeah. Yeah, that'll be uh, next week. Shape of Lamer and Quack Attack. I haven't seen Quack Attack in a while. When no one was looking, JP took 40 kicks. He took 40 kicks. That's a many a four ten. And that's terrible. It is terrible. But thank you anyway, JP, even if you're being terrible. Also, thank you to GoPaws. And who else? There's a couple of people earlier. Fake Life. Thank you, thank you. And that might have been it. Cool. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, we got Shape of the Lamer and we got Quack Attack. Let's go, baby. Yeah, bracket is up. Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark bracket if you want to see it. Um, this is, this is a little bit sketch for this format, but he does have a 61% chance to like instantly win. He just also has, you know, 80% chance to instantly lose. All right. GG's. You guy got a buy? Yeah. You can't go to losers round one. Lanny Poffo and generic up next. I don't know how JP always finds time to like make more monsters. Like, every week he's got a new monster. I don't know how he manages it, but... Didn't even see the first hit. It was quick. Generic. Oh my god, I'm like... I have not got any of these right on my first try. Not yet. Okay. Alright. This is more so what we see here in the depths of 2997. Zap. And a trample, but it doesn't kill. Look at that. Lenny Poffo hanging in there. Tail Assault, not, not great. Not a great choice there. Game two. Trample. Big damage again. And again. But Lanny Poffo's still in it, and he has a massive Guts lead. Kid's gonna do a good chunk, even though, you know, the withering is not super important right now. It will stop his opponent from attacking, like, ever. Is that gonna be enough? It oh, he grits too. They can both swing. Tail Assault will do it now. <laughs> Another trample. Yeah, alright. Alright. So that's generic. Bahamut Zero and Marhid. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm calling it Mar. Did we ever see the Bahamut versus Bahamut Zero fight? Did that ever happen? Marhabid. He's a whale. We got a lot of whales. All right. You know, it's a pretty classic stat line. Did we be doing it? 
did last time. I think it did, right? No? I thought it did. Maybe it didn't. Whale game. Big withering. Knocking up, gonna do a good chunk. Gives his opponent power. You don't really want to do that. The glide charge is gonna finish him off though? Hey, Bahama Zero. You might see Gidris versus Gidris pretty quickly, but you know, this is the format for that. You spot your super shit. Or maybe not. Maybe we won't. Next game, here we go. Game three, it's our first game three. Gidras off, I'm gonna be laughing my Gidras off. Ha uh ha. -huh. All right, and Trample, how much? Not enough to kill, it gives him power. Power Earthquake, that's gonna do 12,000 damage. But, you know, when you get Grit, everything... Everything does not kill when you get Grit. Gidras wins it. Raincoat and Data Phantom. Raincoat is the galley, right? There's like this weird nebulous space in between the two letters that you can press. And it's like, oh, that was an S that time. Oh, it's a T that time, okay. Which I, I assume is for, you know, making it a little bit easier to press when you're on mobile, but why would you not just type? What a stupid omission on their part. Just like, I don't know. I try really hard not to like shit on game devs, right? Because most of the time, bad decisions are a management problem and not a dev problem. But stuff like that, like someone surely said, like, hey, why can't we let them type? Someone had to mention that, right? There's no way. Oh, into the blue wisp. You got no guts left. That a phantom. Pretty good chance to hit. Catching it live. Hey, CBV, thank you. No my space bar? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's because Japan, but. Essentially being a mobile port. Yeah, and them not wanting to spend any money on it. I get it. Missing everything. Eh? The whirlwind lands. He's getting angry. He's getting angry. T bolt. It's gonna do enough. Oh, he's still alive. He's got 60 guts. Hidden sting. Long punch at 64. Hits the second one. We got a lot of great comebacks. As monster rancher farm players, they couldn't trust their asses with typing. You know that's fair. A T bolt. Another T bolt. Claw pinch? Ooh, you big dead. Only gotta get hit a couple times. That's how she goes. Just in Beelzebug. We got Beelzebug. Um, Almost Beelzebug is a great monster. Community around. Thanks, hey, Lancer. Mads. Now let's fight. So yeah, Beelzebug is a fantastic monster for a different weight class. Beelzebug is a welterweight. So this is going to be certainly something. It's a little bit one-sided. I'm not going to lie. We entered the wrong monster. Accidental upload. They they filled in the form. It was a mistake. But whatever. That's what they entered. He could... Maybe... No. No. How are you gonna stat this? You're gonna stat it as Beelzebug. He moved up a weight class. But he's about to get his ass beat. To be fair, I did this exact same thing last week. But I caught it before the event actually happened. I entered a lightweight into uh, a welterweight tournament. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's the wrong format. And I fixed it. And, I, and then I got third. 
So, it, you know, it worked out for me. Also, do that for your tournament? That's the one I'm talking about, yes. It's... Um, Hydra Man and Joan of Slash. Dude, I did not press F. Fuck off. <laughs> Why is it so bad? It's only once I got this mouse, though. I never had this problem before. I swear this never happens. I want to play video games. Oh, no. I need your help burying his body. Oh, bring some towels. Damn. That big gel top there. 54%. Ooh, the T slash? That's not gonna kill though. God damn. And he's got power. Well, now he's dead. He had a shot. He could have done something. My mouse is haunted, yeah. In the link. Thank you for the sub. Very kind of you. Another T slash. The gel top gonna miss. The spike top gonna miss. Give him a little cut in two. Oh, dodges. At the perfect moment. He misses the gel press, though. Really doesn't need power for it. Cut in two is going to take it. Jonah Slash. Both of those monsters basically had the same stat line, too. Kind of interesting that they ended up having to fight each other. The Hound and Combo Clon. The Hound is a Durahan, and, uh... It's a Game of Thrones reference, but the fact he's not a dog is insane. That's an insane name to give him. Alright, Combo Clon. The 400 defense. Here we go. It's not a Durhan, it's a Kamui from above. Oh, that's true. Game of Thrones 40k, yeah, exactly. Bop. Flying press. Ooh, T-Bolt, gonna get him? God damn. See the Hound, you think proto Men with that sub? Maybe it's a proto Men reference. But I think they said it was... Game of Thrones last time. So everyone was trying to figure out what it was actually referencing. Dash slash, big damage. The punch miss. That's a beefy boy though. He took a lot of hits. It's just he took those hits on the way to the grave. It's unfortunate. Alright. Uh we got Tim Othi and Man's Laughter. They typed it with a underscore, but there is no underscore. This guy. Man's laughter. Classic. Short on life. Unfortunate. It's gonna hurt him in this matchup. Could have been a miss shift. No. We we only only think the worst. The thing is, having less life in a format like this doesn't matter if it's first hit wins. Another death final. Not enough to kill this time though. He's got real. He's got no guts. Rear leg kick, not a great move, but very long animation time. Runs out the reel. Man's laughter has like nothing in the bank. God damn, triple stabs killed? That's a hit tech. Oh my god. I'm closer if I made him a tank, but still a beefy boy, yeah. Big Wooloo! Thank you for the sub. Three for three on death final, but he's still alive. No real this time. 
Turn holy shit, Turnstab did so much on the crit. What was that? Rear leg, I'm gonna do a little bit. Basically gives his opponent a second chance to win it. He gets grit, they both got 35-ish guts. The smash combo though? Tim Othi gonna take that one. He took three death finals and he still won. That's pretty crazy. I wanna play video games. Hey, Krim! How you doing, Krimmy? We got Jormungandr and Doug. The two classic names. We got Yormi and we got Doug. Okay, who is this? Everybody named their shit Yorm. And we got... Ba -da -ba -ba. Doug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if this isn't a mock, I'm gonna be real mad. Doug by Brian. Doug is a good name. It's a Baku? Oh, damn. That's a great name for a dog. I think I remember this one. German Gander with a little bit of life. Interesting build. Doug with the, the pretty standard tank build. Very nice. Ugh. Loose bones to goat. That's me, Krim. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Okay. What we got? We got quite a ways to go until we start betting on these. We got way too many entrants today. He... he wants that. It's not working out for him. Now he's dead. Eh, maybe not, but... The Sting Finisher? That's pretty BM. Game number two. Ka-chow. Gus Breath's gonna land, puts him in the yellow. <laughs> you don't need the diving press there, man. He's angry. Another Gus Breath? Oh, it misses. Doug's got a shot. Can he survive the bite? He cannot. That was the bite. Uh, next up, we got Psychonaut and Nightjaboo. of 87. I know that's a fucking Markiplier thing, right? But, like, I have no idea what it means. I'm too old. Uh, did I spell this right? I did not, dude. What is his name? I did not press O. Oh. Five Nine Freddy's thing? Oh, okay. A lot of people running this particular build, and it's pretty interesting, because it's not really normal for the mixed attackers. Normally the mixed or normally the speed mons usually go a lot less into life. So this is kinda cool. Jump and jump miss. Is it nature boo? Oh okay. That's good. Nature boo. Rickaboo. <laughs> Styling and profiling. Hell yeah. And all the other bad shit he gets up to. I don't know if, uh... That's like me. I got a... Uh... What do you call it? An Ultimate Warrior t-shirt? That I just, like, can't wear anymore. For obvious reasons. He was not a good guy. To be the boo, you gotta be the boo. You also gotta be the boo. It's like we're not with a little bit. He misses the laser cutter. 26%. Eric Flair has a mass grave of skeletons in his closet at this point. I don't even know if they're in the closet, because, like, you know, Dark Side of the Ring was a thing. Jumping chop, big damage at 35%. God damn. Lands it anyway. He wants to wrestle. He's also the Crypt Keeper. Both in age and metaphorically, yes. A samurai kick. Night Jabu's gonna take it. 
The boo does the thing. Raving rabbit and a uh, meow. A uh, meow. Raving our baby. I'll be honest. I'm surprised by Ric Flair's sexual demons. <laughs> Clearly, you're not paying attention to the man. True, but also like. Is that I don't know if deviancy is the word I would call it. Um uh, meow. Is this a dog? Is this a bow wow? Oh hell yes it is. I called it. Look at that. Jay Lethal is a superior Ric Flair at this point in time. I think so too. Six wives. <laughs> Six wives. <laughs> hell yeah. Okay, a lot of people run in speed. It's interesting. Hit him with the bang? He's not dead though. I mean, he's got power. Power twiddling too? That would have been crazy. Too good to be true though. Too good to be two. Is that a Sonic movie reference? Yeah. But also, he's a. He's a dog who's a cat. Damn, he got him. Hell yeah. Jay Lethal is past his prime? Uh, yeah, probably, but like... In a conversation about Ric Flair, who has been doing the fucking retirement tour for the last 90 years... I don't know. Rushing Punch missed at 27, the gas isn't gonna land either. 10 seconds left. Yeah, I was winning. The bang comes out! Two for two on the bangs, Raving Rabbit is gonna take that. <coughs> So, that was game two, right? Yes. Rick Flair might actually be a lich. Not many full on speed monsters with these lower skill and stats. Yeah, it's, uh. No, it was 1 1. Yeah, there's not a lot of. People are running the really low life builds in this. Which I think is probably fine because. You know. Everyone's gonna be running 999 skill regardless. Gilded and what the dog doing? Okay, um... You guys, uh, you guys ever feel like uploading your monsters? <laughs> it's technically uploaded, it's just on the wrong file. So we're gonna, we're gonna let it swing. We're giving him a shot, it's technically what was, uh, entered. It's gonna be a close one, folks. Hold on, is that your monster? You didn't upload it? You didn't get in touch with Jay when he... ...told everyone? Game one, here we go. I don't have time to wait. I'm gonna get through 64 monsters today. 62 monsters. Must have uploaded file one while watching this. All right, get it, get it to me. Um, Malenko and Gooby, the great Malenko, eh? Gilded? More like Gil dead. Thanks for letting him upload. I it's not gonna slow down anything if he uh if he gets it up before we're done this first round, you know. Should be in nice. Yeah, no probalo. At least uh we gotta figure it out, you know. 
The Pierce miss. The Pierce hits. Gooby. Gooby takes it. Look at that. Game one goes to the gel. I love gel's animations in two. I don't know why they could never, like, capture it again. Hey! Five gifted. Thank you for him, man. Very kind of you. He's straight goobin. He is straight goobin. He's in goob prime right now. You gotta watch out. Oh, uh, he's a goobin and Cuban. Hell yeah. He's Mark Cuban. We got I shank a lot and Plum up next. And a little plum. Just a tiny little plum. Everyone named their monsters plum something. Kyle. The golem. Wow, it's actually interesting. After the first like four monsters, we haven't seen any tanks. It's kind of wild. It is like the dominant build in this format. But I mean, more so when you can run stuff like Ripper or Metalner. Cyclone's gonna hit a 29 anyway? Damn, but I shank is still hanging in there, and he is gonna be shanking. He just misses with the stab. Goob 3? Goob 3. It's pretty good too. Oh, the scratch gonna do big damage? Two in a row? He's got the grit in himself. They both got 45 guts. The charge comes out, it misses. Shanklot's gonna win. This is like the first like true speed monster, 298. But even he didn't go full skill. I guess having 198 life is quite low. The double grid, and then that one was took four seconds, four in game seconds. I shank gonna take it. Crab cyclist and fleshless up next. Crabby C. Man, I was gonna upload all of the the vods for the last month, um, like one a week. And it's already been like two weeks since I uploaded the first DXPL three vod. It's just you. Uh, I just don't have time. It. I thought I was gonna have more free time, and then I had a couple of days off, and I was like, I don't want to do anything. Fleshless versus Crab Cyclist. Here we go. Okay. Big Stompy. I'm just updating uh, scores right now. The Glide Charge is not going to do much of anything. The trample gonna do uh, quite a bit though. Oh no, I need your help. Alright, now we got Gildan and what the dog doing for real. Damn, this is like the most speed build. Look at that. 98 life? That's wild. And I saved their Fs for Macho's Mon. Damn. I be miss? Jesus. Alright. They're both uh quite speedy. What the dog do? Is this even that's not even the right monster? <laughs> Got your ass beat by the wrong dog. Oh my god. He's got power. This Swayzo has been nothing but trouble. Does this Swayzo have grit? I don't think the gold ones do.
You get it from combining bronze and silver? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can get that. So yeah, you can. What am I spelling wrong? Oh, it's there's no H. You know, I should start you at one in the hole. You got your ass beat by the wrong dog, and you didn't upload your guy. Alright, here we go. Okay, well, game one's over. Game two, here we go. The Yodel miss? You know, technically, if he bites him here, it's the same as the first game. Oh, he hits him with the 1-2. That Soyuz are like dodged at nothing. 999 speed for what? Oh no. Very unfortunate. Uh, okay. We're now into the second half of the bracket. That's great. Let me just update these scores real quick before I forget. Who won, uh, I shank a lot, the dog won, right? Because the golem plum hit Cyclone, and I think he just lost both. Yeah, okay. They both got the grit, and then, yeah, he got the stab win. He's, he's awful. I wouldn't say he's awful. I think the one thing you could improve on is going for 800 speed instead of 999. That way you get 200 free life. Gummy Worm and Kokoro up next. Oh, Kokoro's back? Hell yeah. I'm a Kokoro fan. Color Pandora. But also, you know, it's double Olin, so he's not actually out of the bracket yet. Okay, here we go. The stab. Not really what he wants. This is the the cocooned worm. You can get a cocooned worm that doesn't actually get um, whip. If you cocoon a worm just as is, it'll have stab and pierce. Copied over from uh, sting and bite. The cannon at 99, well, it's going to do a lot of damage. Don't know if you've seen beam gun hit before. It's got Gatling too. I love Gatling, man. Gatling's such a good tech. Nobody gets Gatling, but... I do. I get it on like every gel. I prefer the combo of cannon and Gatling to Copter. Gatling's underrated. It's because it doesn't really do any damage. It's just got an insane chance to hit and um, does a lot of withering. Base attack can do more than half. Two in a row? Mamma mia. He ate that Gatling. He ate that Copter. The only thing he didn't eat was the the cannon. <laughs> it did 700 damage. Kruger and Helmet up next. Angel wins tonight? One. Helmet the Mochi? Has he got a little bit of intelligence? Alright. Let's go. The 300 intelligence, we'll see if that's the, the chance. That's what Mochi needs, just a tiny bit of intelligence. Chop Stab's gonna do a good chunk, decent amount.
The smash gonna do damage into the stab throw. Helmet. Poor guy. Triple stabs once again, 318 damage. No withering on that. The slap gonna tie it up though. Ooh, roll attack probably gonna take it. It does. Only 30%. It makes him fight smarter, that's what I've heard. It's true. Oh, the roll assault at 30? This man's playing fucking Cyclone Golem on his mochi. Just without the payoff. He's gonna win that one 2-1. One. Poor Kruger. Damn. They're becoming too powerful. I don't know. Pot of Flies and Suplexi up next. Mochi can win, he's just gotta get lucky. And he got lucky. What are you gonna do? Alright. Is Pot of Lies the one with only stuff in slot 2? Yes, it is. Thought you missed sign-ups? Sign -ups? If the form is still open, your monster will be in it. I can, like, close it to, like, stop accepting. Plexi gonna take it. He did in fact suplex him, he did the thing, it's true. Many people are saying he's living up to his name. Oh, the grit. The 70 guts. Is he gonna attack at all though? Very rare to attack in slots too compared to some of these other slots. Straight can do good damage, needs one more. I don't have a great chance to hit on Suplexi side. Somersault is his best option. Six seconds left. Pot of Lies just they cannot do anything. Two Pierce throws in a row to run out the clock. That is some bullish behavior on Suplexi's part. Playing a win. Look at that. When's that one? 2 0. Oh. Divinity and Spanakopita up next. Spanakopita is another old one. back from the Dr. Baloney days, who has now been retired. But uh, what's very funny is I think um, Dr. Baloney would have been insanely strong in this specific bracket because everybody's running speed for some reason. And he's built to like beat speed mons. If only if my little pot could have made it to round three. Well, he's still in losers. He's not out yet. Get him with the bang. He's dead. Game two. Need to hear everyone's running speed. I really hope it stays this way so I can just keep running tanks and I don't have to worry about Cyclone. There's been one Cyclone Golem so far. Divinity. Gonna take that 2 0. Look at that. We got Mobius and Alphonse. Is this the right one? It is. A lot of mons named Alphonse, what the hell? Okay, we got... My boy, we got Tank Hercules over here. Alp knows, exactly. The Rolling Slash winner? Damn. Double suffocation puts him in the yellow. The flash slash gonna miss. Two in a row though? 
Puts him back in the lead. But he doesn't need a lead. He needs a KO. The lead means nothing when you get smoked by the next attack. Game three already. Here we go. Rolling slash 42%. 42% is actually pretty good. It's higher than I thought it was. Is he going to miss that? And the dash slash. Wow, that top did so much damage. Good crit for him. Another rolling slash miss. It's probably over. There's the ease. He's just being a jerk now. Moby is going to take that one. Do one. Dig on it and bad luck duck up next. Now we find out if he can uh, compete, if he can uh, repeat the last minute blade tournament where he just hits Cyclone every round. Well, his first opponent's a Speedmon. It didn't stop him last time, but we'll see if it does now. I think the game likes to see Cyclone hit. Can you change your name color? You can't, yes. Anyway, GG's the Dagon wins. Heap of Duck and Spike Strip. Oh my god, we're gonna have to have Spike Strip versus. Oh no, it was AE, right? No, it was Spike Strip versus Dagon at last time. Head of Duck. And spike strip. The spikester. Here we go. The speedy wall. Let's see, got 760 speed equivalent to 900 with the minimum form bonus. Damn, the power punch? Holy moly, head of duck with the power proc. Sometimes it's all it takes. Game number two. Flying press. Tries to give him the smoosh. It didn't hey, work, though. Spike Bite can do big damage and give him power again, but needle stabs. He's not playing with his food this time. Spike Strip wins at game number two. Between Jay Lethal, he just lost the match in a round robin tournament. Rip. He's playing Monster Rancher. Into the knock? Spike Strip won't stop. That man's fighting for his life. He got it. He wants the run back. He's mad about last time. He's like, I gotta beat Dig on it. Deo and Slimiest Max up next. Is that enough A's? Deo. Me say day, me say day, me say day. Uh, slimiest max. Of course, all the golems are on my side of the bracket. Explaining to what Americans what a round robin is in that elimination tournament. I'm thinking, well, if people play Monster Rancher, they know, yeah. They would know. Oh, the suffocation hits. No breathing, brother. The cyclone attempt. Only Mach is allowed to hit it. Two whips. Watcha. Watcha. All right. They're both even on guts now. Slimy Smacks got to swing three times in the time the cyclone did. Ooh, the gel press miss at 44. Wow, it's gonna miss as well. The slap. This is the big slap. Oh, the gel press was six seconds left on the clock. Slimy is max. I'm gonna put Deo into losers. Next up, we got Bonsai and Thronobo. Gonsai. Gonsai would be a good one too. Bonsai is this way, is all right? Yeah, that's a great name. 
Both of these are great names. Throwable. Okay, more more of the same build. Thanks, very proud of that name. It's a good one. The teleport. It's trying. We got tail assault. It's gonna miss the thwack. The thwack misses though. Again, uno mas. No, he's gonna get smoked first. Unfortunate. Bonsai takes the tail assault and the win. He's a veiny little dude, eh? It's gnarly. Ooh, the grab throw, the single hit. That's all she took to get the win. We're going to game number three. I don't know what accent that was supposed to be. I don't know what was going on there. Ooh. Teleport doing good damage, but another grab throw. Mamma mia. Thronobo's going to take that one. You spot your super here. Mamma mia. We got Thir Dr. Thermidor and Grub Sauce. Dr. Thermidor and Grub Sauce. Here we go. Dr. Thermidor is a very clever name because of the story of Lobster Thermidor. Is that what you're saying? How they first made it on accident. And uh, they're like, no, we, we totally made, totally meant to make this recipe. It wasn't a complete fucking disaster. And then he's like, this is very good. Damn, Grub Sauce gets the kill. Look at that. Two in a row? Missed the second one. Claw, pinch. Into the claw assault. We're going to game three. Upstream cool now. He's been cooked. That pinch throw at 48, he swings it. Hits the somersaults. I didn't have time to take a sip of my tea. Here, there's a similar story to how grub sauce is made, it's true. Slimy yet satisfying. Uh, haha, epic XD and quiver. That lobster is seriously steamed. Quiver is another uh, uh, Undine, right? Been a while since I've seen it, yeah. Okay. We got a sniper. Sniper, no sniping. We got Quiver. You got Arrowed. Arrowed! Arrowed should be another sound effect. I should make that one. Arrowed. Four oh four. A wave of babies. A wave of babies is my favorite. I don't know how Daphne named Centaur. I that I think it's just a shit post. I love how I never get grits, but I have one defense on Dean does. Yeah, I mean how it's me too. Times. Times, times. It's val mamlum times. Uh, big beat and cavity. I gotta fight Sphera, huh? Hey? Is that one one or am I tripping? It was two one, right?
Yeah, it was 2 1. Okay. You know what's crazy? I know it was 2 1. I don't know who won. <laughs> I just know three games happened, but I was not paying attention. It was the horsey, right? Yeah, the haunts one. Yeah. Okay. The stabs. But a kick comes out. And a charge? Laser cutter 36? He loves swinging that laser cutter. Only against speed mods, though. Flattening can do a little bit of damage. Two in a row. Give him some more guts. Cavity's in a little bit of a guts lead, though. Goes for another laser cutter. <laughs> you got other moves, brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, shit. He's got grit. He's still in it. Another flattening. It's not going to be enough to kill, but he can keep swinging if he wants. Another one. Do we see another grit? We do, but time runs out. Cavity runs the clock with many, many flattenings. Game two. The punch miss. Laser cutter 33. Brother, I am imploring you to swing something else. We had an entire other set where the monster didn't attack because he only had attack in slot two. Yeah, well, I get grit, but I'm going to get smoked here. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. Uh, everyone building speed monsters. Everyone getting, building speed monsters just to get smoked by Cyclone Golem anyway. Like, why do you, why do, you do this to everyone? Oso Odorous and Cool Runnings up next. He just wants to cut the wall. It's funny because he hit like basically an exactly like average amount of hits based on the percentages. Like it was pretty it lined up pretty well. It's just that it happened to be 30% over and over again. Okay. Real chads get smoked by trample dragon like a citizen. Exactly. Oh, the seed gatling opener and closer. 35%. When I see that happen, like sometimes it feels bad to make a tank because you're like, I can't dodge. But then you see. Someone lose to a single 35% hit, and you're like, you know, it's not, not too bad. Or you can just get hit by like 12 hits in a row that all do zero damage. So what is happening here? Head of Dark lost to our wall. What is going on here? Lifesteal? Oh, okay. So, so we do some damage at the end. Look at that. Cool running is going to take that. That was uh, certainly a set. We got Mateo and we got Troa up next. You're awake just in time. Okay. Energy shot. He's like, hmm, meteor or energy shot against this monster that can't dodge. I wonder. Energy shot it is. Scary Gundam Wing reference? Yes, it is. There's the meteor. He's dead. He's just got to do that one more time and he can win it. Terminate about to push me to make a ripper. Ripper would have lost there too, by the way. That double meteor. He's gonna take it. 2 1. Okay. Is this our last match? We got Lily and Selvia, so I have to fight each other. Okay. Round one. Oh no. Let's go, Bub and UFO. This is a terrible round one. 
This is what happens when you do random seeding. This is why random seeding doesn't exist. Uwe versus Owo. It's also Owo versus Owo. That's true. Okay. Here we go. So I've just gotten points every week. Isn't over 15 yet? Yeah, I know. Because I beat her last week or the week before. I beat the Kamui in lightweight. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get extra points for that. And I didn't. Other than, you know, the one for beating Kamui. The whip. The whip. Well, all right. Well, that was a set. So that is the end of round one. That, that took a while. It took an hour. A little bit under an hour. We are... Bop, bop. Yeah, about a quarter of the way through. Hood of Class... Or Hood Classic and Shape of Lame are up next. Hood Classic's one of two monsters we haven't seen yet, because they gotta buy. The four whip special? That's what's for dinner. <laughs> oh my god, no way. Alright. Well, this is a certified hood classic. Hood of classic, indeed. Well, we got a banned monster, folks. Hell yeah. Alright, this monster is not legal. But, what guts rate is this hood? Uh, is this the 8 one? Or nine. There is a 13 gust rate time noise. Is there actually? Okay, let me check. Folks, it's not the 13 gust rate. It's the eight one. Just want to remind everyone she doesn't have grit. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the big difference. Yeah. Anyway, this monster is crazy. <coughs> Damn, made me cough. So, um, what you're about to witness is the strongest monster possible in this format after Metal Nair. Um, banned monsters are legal in the DXBL. It's just that they get drastically reduced points. You know, there's other stipulations and other people get points for beating them. Uh, like that was certainly, that was certainly a set. Generic and Bahamut Zero up next. One way to defend not giving up points for being over 15, it's true. Okay, so we got Dragon Fight. The winner of this has to fight the time noise. Never discount a low guts rate Naga in middleweight. Might actually be Arrowhead. Oh, you're such a contrarian, dude. You know how crazy it is to say that time noise is worse than Arrowhead? On. No data, just just vibes. You're like, you know what? I think it's this way. That's fucking crazy. I love that about you. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> never, never change. All right, we got trample into trample. Trample wins. Do we see it again? No, we see a little bite this time. But he's got the anger and the guts lead. Four more bites. And then you can have your Sunday. The bite lands. Finally off the road for a second. What's up? You hit two more fucking cyclones against the speed monster. You've got to fight Spike Strip again. Soul Salt is absolutely nuts against tanks and hidden things. Just also can win against speedsters. Okay. 
That's fantastic. What if uh, the arrowhead also had an eight guts rate and was just, you know, could actually do something after the roll assault? Generic's gonna win that one. Like, Arrowhead's very good. One of the best monsters in the format. Only monster I take over time noise is Ripper. And even then, if you're not going to... If you're building a tank, there's an argument to be made for not getting grit. If you don't think anyone's going to be running Cyclone Golem. Data, Phantom, and Jest. So, grit is really your only answer against Cyclone Golem. Um, but if you're running a tank, like the one extra hit doesn't often matter too much. Just we banned that instantly. That's right, and that's what we did with uh, a better monster. You're right. Uh, fuck. Because like Arrowhead's got good moves, right? Arrowhead's got very strong tax. It does not have Naga strength tax. They're very close, but like they're not quite there. Alright. Better run Speed Ripper? Yeah, exactly. They gone is why I'd pick Ripper. No, so, uh, yeah, we're talking about uh, building uh, Grit is the only reason to uh, run Ripper over uh, Time Noise. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Wait, is just banned too? Is just only basics? I didn't even notice that. Clown has slash. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has slash. I suppose Punisher is also an option. You know, not not like uh, Slash makes him worse in this format or anything, but... I was thinking some peaks earlier with all the low stat speedsters with, like, slightly higher life. Yeah. Just, just gonna punch his way to victory. As one does. Joan of Slash and the Hound. Well, we had two uh, dragons fighting, now we got two Durahans. Okay, here we go. The rolling slash opener, but it doesn't kill, even at 31%, eh? Not a very good chance to hit the slash combo at 24. It's crazy. Rolling Slash, ironically, is a better anti-speedster option than anti-tank option. Doesn't really do a ton of damage, but it's very good at ending the game frame one, even though, you know, it doesn't have a great chance to hit. 2-0 well for Jonah Slash. Tim, Othi, and Jormungandr. Oim. Oim, Tim, Othi. Okay. Tim Othi getting bit. Damn, that's a big smash. Burn stab. Is that gonna be enough? It is, but there's the grit. Yormi. Yormi's coming back. He's gonna get kicked in the face. Game number two. Death Thrust at 32% lands? Mama Mia, that's it. Thirty-two percent, it's enough. Unless it's my monster. 
Nature Boo and Raving Rabbit up next. This is the days after it finally goes on a good run. What if he's gonna run into Macho and then that's gonna be it? <laughs> um. I just realized all of the all of the golems are on my side. Okay. More speed. That was a quick one. Game two. Jumping combo, or jumping chop, sorry, miss. The bang hits, Raving Rabbit's gonna take it. Nature gets put in the ground. What the dog doing in Gooby up next? What dad? He's making a hair named Diamond Dallin Page. Diamond Dallin. <laughs> His name is Dallin now. Diamond Dallas Page. Diamond Upside Down is a pussy. Diamond Dallin, indeed. Shell top lands. What the Gooby doing? I know, we got a meme fight here. Spike top gonna land. Spike top gonna take it. Game number two, here we go. Give him the bite. It's gonna roll us all a tiny little bit of damage. Two in a row, Gooby down to half, but he's doing okay. Three cubes. He's been swinging that a lot. I know what it feels like to be swinging the cubes and missing. The stab's gonna take it though. What the dog doing? Still in it, and he gets stabbed right in the brain again. Holy moly. Gave him a lobotomy. Uh, rapid and Gooby. Gooby Dooby taking it. We got I Shank a lot and Fleshless up next. Stabbed in the front of the dog. I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. Okay, another Speedymon fight. He's got 900 speed. That'll show him. Gooby dooby goo, where art you? This is legally distinct. This is legally distinct. Shooby dooby doo. Trample's gonna miss. Trample's gonna miss again. Shank a lot. It goes for the bite. That's not shanking. But he doesn't need it, just the, the basics. But he grips. He's still in it. It's the wing attack. Not a bite. Shanky's gonna take it to game number three. The two bites? You, you only needed the basics. Just swing the basics, buddy. The basics, buddy. It is non-existent. Assless? Assless is a good name. Okay, who's next? We got... 
Uh, 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 oh, that's the first bracket. Okay, we're halfway through this second round. We got losers, losers round one, please, by JP. And we got Kokoro. Saw one Mochi win today. Will we see a second? Hank Mochi, eh? You better have Giant Press. Is it just basics? The fuck is this build? I guess, you know, you uh, don't have a lot of options with Mochi. That's... That actually did a lot of withering. He's up on Guts again after that. The one-two thrust. He gives him power, though. Power Tail Swing. Pretty good chunk. But the one-two thrust with Fury is going to take it. That was, like, extremely good withering on the slap. I don't know why so many of them did so much. Yeah, Thrust is doing less. Giant Whip. Two Giant Whips. We're going to Game 3. Master of Unorthodox Strats. Yeah. Master of using a tried and true monster to get second plays. He loses with banned monster, maybe try winning with low tiers. You know? Mix up the strats. It's a lot of moves. Losers has a ton of guts. It's gonna do big chunk. Gives him power. One two thrust again. Do we see grit? He's gonna take it. He slapped his way to victory. Turns out face attack's not a very good basic tech. Who would have thought? Shout out to the headbutts though. Helmet and Suplexi up next. Are we gonna have two mochis fighting each other? Someone show that person who said uh nobody remembers who it is at this point. Did someone show them that? Best basic in the game right there, we're looking at it. And have to redo the tier ranking and raise mochis up? Yeah, we'll have to do it again. Okay. Here we go. A little bit of damage on the roll salt. Mochi is Melner tier, obviously. Melner is Mochi tier, obviously. I think you mean. Mochi is the mascot. Of course they're going to make him good. Suplexi. Game number two. Oh, the roll attack. He had the foolery. He could have done the pinch throw. He's gonna get smoked. Lucky matching for this one for who? I think mo this mochi in particular needs to run into speed mons, or else it's going to have trouble. The problem with building a tank is you need to be able to outdamage the other tank. If you're built to just beat speed and you run into a tank, you'll get your ass beat. I've made that mistake before. Redo the entire Mochi Rancher Rundown? I got it now. Uh, the gel. Okay. Yeah, we also got a Pixie who won. It's uh, been certainly a format. Here we go. The Flame Lands? We're gonna have two mochis and uh, a pixie in round three. You'll love to see it. Oh, the suffocation lands. Grit's gonna take it. A lot of lightning misses. Another suffocation hit doesn't kill this time, though. 
Spike Top's gonna miss. Got a 60 guts lead. Big bang, 35%. Not a great chance, but, you know, it would've killed. Would've been nice. Ooh, he takes it. Okay. So, you know, Divinity got close. But not close enough. Moby is going to take that. Dig on it and Spike Strip. The rematch. Match of the night. Spike Strip going to crash that Lobster Man to the ditch. I mean, you got, you got hit with Cyclone twice last time. Spike Stab's gonna take game one. Mamma Mia. 41% of Cyclone is terrifying. He misses it though, but it's still terrifying. The spike Bite. Well, turn. The attacks he hit him with were actually less accurate than Cyclone. So that's certainly something. Slimiest Max and throw Nobo up next. Get two for beating Macho? That's right, because Macho's hoarding all the points. Macho's got a target on his back. Aaron's got to beat his ass. I should make that the rule for uh, month three. Just if you beat Macho, you get an additional point. <laughs> no, I have something cooking for, for week three. Additional ways to get points. Crab throw's gonna miss. Oh, the stab lands. Ooh, thwack. Big damage. The grab throw miss is pretty close. Slimius, I believe, has a very slight. Well, no, he doesn't have a lead. Infernal has a bigger life total. He's gonna get his ass beat, though. In the last second, Slimiest Max gives him a little smack. We're going to game two, just like that. The grab throw miss. Ooh. The thwack, the thwack finisher. Going to game three. Stab gonna do a good chunk, brings him down to half health. Thronobo gets the thwack, puts him in the green, just enough to not get power. Gel press gonna miss at 45. Another thwack comes out and misses at 50. Grab throw, he keeps going for it. Not a great move in this matchup. The crit spike top gonna take it. Isn't that game four? Is it? Thought gel one game one, monkey one game two, gel one game three. Turn up a late dinner so I can stick around. Just want to say hi to so the tournament's going. Looks officially nuts. It's pretty crazy so far. Thanks for tuning in. We got Grub Sauce and Haha -ha Epic up next. Okay. We got some grubs. We got some epic, epic XDs. Here we go. Meteor drive opener, four seconds. Game number two, here we go. And that'll do it. It's not Cyclone, but uh, it's 
close. It's what, 60 force? Cavity and Cool Running's up next. I don't actually know what time I gotta be at work tomorrow. I'm pretty sure it's super early. <laughs> I'll find out. Spike stab's gonna miss there, and the spike bite. Cool Ring's got a shot. Hitting the jab, not the right move. Life's still at 43. Oh, he's gonna take it. He's back to full health. Flattening gonna do a good chunk though. Gets power run at the clock, but then gets smoked by another flattening. Cool running's tried. You know, you can't fault him for trying there. He did his best. Game number two. It's a lot of power attacks to be swinging against a monster who can one hit. You don't want to be doing that against a monster who can one hit. It's very hard to run over a spike strip. That's true. It is. Cavity's gonna win that one. We got Mateo and UFO up next. You're awake again. Welcome. There's two on your own crazy pills? Okay. Well, thank you for checking. Here we go! Energy shot. Oh, you can't violent shell, but now you got insane guts regen and a little bitty punch. Oh, the electric stab miss at 99. Holy moly. Hits the electric whip, though. It's a little bit of damage. Triple stings. Ooh. Probably can still, like, run this out, though. Mateo can't do anything in slot one. But another triple sting is gonna come out? Oh my god. He takes it. Game number two. The Violent Shell opener, good damage, not enough to kill. A lot of withering, though. Gonna stop him from being able to do the Meteor. Hits the energy shots, gives him anger. Two in a row, look at that. Not really worth it, but uh, at least he hit the two attacks. You gotta hit that energy shot, frame one. I think it's too much to ask for another 99 miss. You already got the one. Triple Sting is going to do a little bit of damage. And another Anger? Holy moly. That is one angry snail. Every single time this guy has gotten hit and he's gotten Anger. He does it. He does the thing. 2-1. Mateo got a game, though. Alright. That is the end of round two. We are now at play-ins to top 16. We got Hood Classic and Generic. Doesn't like being hit, I'd be angry too. That's a good point. That's quite good to hear. Hey! Zephyr, how are you doing? Alrighty. Who can stop the time noise? Trample, opener, actually probably not that great. He's gonna have trouble building up the guts. He's got anger. Oh, turn salt lands. No grit. He needs to, like, walk forward. Well, I guess there's no real good option here. Turn salt does so much withering. Like, he's got a guts lead, but it's not much. It's not gonna be enough to kill. And now he's down. It's tough, man. This monster's bonkers. It hits the bite, though. Generic, taking it to game three. Thurnsaw might be a good tag. It might be pretty good. The bite, the worst move he can use in this matchup. But he swings it. Into the trample. Is it going to be enough? It's going to be close. It's enough. Damn. The turn assault opener turned out to not be the play. Generic. Takes out the Banmon. 
So now we got Hood Classic roaming around the depths of losers right now. Generic makes it to top 16. Just and Joan of Slash up next. I keep thinking I can find... Oh, it's right there. Look at that. Jofnoff. Yeah, so you get the point for beaten the band monster. The point for top 16. If you're getting three, what's the third one from? This is just I have more than uh, 15 points. Being 15 plus. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay, so two from beating the 15 points. The one for beating the band monster, and then one for making top 16, guaranteed. So at least four points today. Also be Bahamut Zero of Division Mate. Damn. Freeman gonna be making a lot of points today. Even if he busters out and goes 0-2 at this point. He's guaranteed um, at least, was it ninth place? Ooh, just gonna take game number two. I haven't been commentating on this, but uh, we're going to game three. This is the only game that matters now. The slash combo lands, it's good damage, but just has death slash and a guts lead. And Jonah slash does not have any life. He hits the one hitter, he's moving on. 2 1. We got Tim Othi and Raving Rabbit up next. I just realized, am I the only hanger in this entire tournament? That's crazy. Hanger's a really good middleweight. I think there's only the one hair too, right? Oh, Psychonaut. Yeah, okay. That's right. The... What do you call it? The Proto. The two one two punches, you know, it's not great damage. Death Thrust gonna miss. Very fast animation on a miss though, so you know he gets right back into the action. Triple stabs at 68%. He's gonna do a grip. It's not quite enough, but the turn stab finisher. He grits. You don't actually see turn stab picked up too often. It's just very hard to dodge when you're doing um, tech chaining. Or when you're like trying to get techs rather. Those gases really know what Raven wanted to do there. Another turn stab, it's gonna miss. Tim Othi gonna take it. Another death thrust miss. Ooh, the gas, the double gas, the triple gas, the quadruple gas. He's got like a five gas lead and it's over now. You know, it was fun. Absolutely not a good use of guts, but it was fun. <laughs> you know, here, Farden, yeah, Farden and Faden. Dodges the two kicks. Bang! It's gonna put him in the lead by a tiny bit. Timothy can still take this, but he's not gonna. Raven Rabbit wins by 7%. We're going to game number three. So many fart rabbits lately? Well, I mean, that's not his strategy. He only has the one gas. And, uh, he's dead. Tim Othi gonna take that one. 2-1. One. We got... Who's up next? Gooby and I shank a lot. Okay, we are in fact not back, it's true. Here we go. Spike top, big damage, almost kills. But Shank is still in it, damn, he's not in it anymore. We're seeing a lot of that. I grit, I am back. And then he's not. The Pierce. The Pierce. Mama Mia. The dog didn't even do nothing. What the dog doing? Nothing. 
Gooby moves on to top 16. We got our second half of top 16 play-ins. We got losers round one, please. And we got suplexy. Well, the worm's not going to like getting withered. But he did actually uh, forego some points in skill to be quite tanky. So we'll see how that holds up. That's quite a bit of damage. Somersault. For a hit tech, that's not bad. Pinch throw. How much damage are we looking at? 859 on the crit. Tail Ash can do a little bit of damage. Headbutt. Good chunk there. Another pinch throw. How much? Another crit. 831. Well, no losers around one, but uh, not top 16 yet. The crits, man. Mobius and Spike Strip. The Mobius Spike Strip? <laughs> That's a good matchup. for catching five-dimensional cars. Spike strip, Mobius. It's, it's Mobin time, Mobius spike strip, that's a good name for something. Spike strip, not even using the spikes. Just using the DMX. Whip. Whip. A spike bite? He's gonna take it. Look at that. That's it. That's all it took. Spike strip moving on. Slimiest Max and Haha -ha Epic. It helps if I uh, remember the exclamation mark. Okay, here we go. Meteor drive, but he's still in it. Spike top, I'm doing a decent amount of damage. But he needs something big to finish it off. Stab's not going to do it. He's going to get... Damn. What did I miss? We're almost in top 16. He missed quite a bit. Speaking of T, we've got one more set. And then I'm going to go get some more of my own. Because we will be officially ready to be doing loser's bracket. Cavity up next. And UFO for the final play in. Okay, here we go. It's your top, first top 16. Nice. Well, congratulations. A little flatten. Spike stabs. Electric whip, definitely gonna kill on a single hit, yeah. Yeah, god, god. Game number two. Oh, that'll kill him too. Can't dodge. Ooh, if oh, moves on to top 16. That's a 2-0, 2 0, -oh. two -oh -oh. Okay, so from this point on, until the next little break, every monster that loses is out of the tournament. They're done. 
A lot of Canadian kids shows were in the States, like Under the Umbrella Tree. Under the Umbrella Tree is one that I remember, but I talked to my sister about it. She's like, I got no idea what you're talking about. I'm not trying to spam. Just curious if you're still thinking about doing Dragon's Quest Monsters matches like this when the game drops. Yeah, uh, I do want to do that. I never actually finished the uh, demo. It was just like... Um, it came out at a time where it's like I had a couple of days to play it and then like just a bunch of other stuff got in the way. Um, I didn't get to get as much done as I wanted, but I did enjoy it. Um, and yeah, I think it would be really fun to do tournaments for it. It's coming out in December, right? Which lines up because this, uh, what I'm doing right now is a league and it's going to be... Oh, it comes out next Friday. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this league will be going until, like, partway through January. So that gives us about a month and a half to, like, figure it out, and then uh, we can start doing tournaments. We might have, like, little one-offs, like, to get ready for it beforehand, though. All right, game number three. Next Friday is December. Wouldn't you know it? I have almost nothing done for the next Rancher Rundown. I wrote the script at like the end of October. I did a couple of little doodles and then I've done like literally nothing since. It's just been... Damn. I'm feeling like this guy right now. I'm feeling like the whale. It's just... I've had some time off, but the last little while has been so much insane work that like... I didn't want to do anything. I just played Diablo. And, uh, that's basically it. Or, like, read. Or did. Whatever. I did a little bit of video editing, but nothing on the... Nothing on, uh, the Rancher Rundown. Will these DQM fights have gambling? Of course they will. Somebody, uh, reached out to me on, uh, like, through my email to like get in touch about doing editing for videos and stuff and I think that's really cool. I do think I probably need more than one editor because the problem is these, I mean one is probably fine, but I can't pay like a proper rate. I can pay, pay a little bit, but these videos don't make a ton of money, right? So that's why I try to get people from the community because you know, they, they wanna help out. Also, yeah, Beelzebug is a welterweight. He's uh, probably not going to win, but... Basically, like, um, if I get you to edit down a four-hour VOD or whatever into an hour or 45 minutes or something like that, I usually pay about 50 bucks. You know, it's... It, it depends on how fast you are. It usually comes out to about like sixteen dollars an hour, fifteen dollars an hour, which you know isn't incredible money, but it is something. And uh, I do appreciate the help. So if anyone's interested, it's the next ranch run down, Jill. No, the December one is though. I think we're technically doing the November one. It's good pay outside of North America. That's true. So yeah, if you uh, if you're interested and you want to help out, uh, I could desperately use the help. Better than minimum wage in Nova Scotia. Yeah, Hydraman and Combo Clon up next. The thing is, though. Is, and now, here's where I start, uh, like, shooting myself in the foot. Everybody's like, oh, this sounds really good. Um, most of the time, it's going to be less than that, right? Because if it's a four-hour VOD, you got to watch the whole thing. Like, not start to finish, but that usually means you're at least watching, like, maybe 80% of it. And, like, skipping through parts. Um, so, most of the time you're like pretty close to that, if not a little bit more. It's just, I don't know, it's difficult. Difficult to find people. 50 bucks more or less, one fifth of minimum wage here. One fifth of minimum wage?
What are you talking about? Also, the horn attack power. You you live somewhere where it's uh, two hundred and fifty dollars an hour. That's crazy. Every everyone in your country is a millionaire. That's wild. Spike top can do a little bit of bit of damage. Vanilla beetle badge of coolness. I like um, vanilla bee clon. Yeah. We see a lot of vanilla bee clones in competitive though. Dude must live in minimum monthly wage. Oh, yeah, I'm talking hourly. <laughs> $50 for a, uh, a four hour VOD. So, I mean, it, you know, if you know editing and you want to do five videos a month for me, one, that's already more than like I would put out on my own, but uh, it's certainly something. 13 Guts isn't that bad? No, it's exactly average. It's not too terrible. And he has a lot of slow Guts rate breeds, so... It ends up not being the worst pick. Combo Clon gonna win that one. 2-1. That power in the first round was crazy. Man's Laughter and Doug up next. I'm just hoping I also don't go 0-2 today. It, uh... It always feels bad. You know? I say always as if I'm always going 0-2, but last week was actually the first time it's ever happened. And it was terrible for my psyche. I couldn't sleep for days. Stopped eating. No, that's not true. I got over it real quick, but uh, still, you know, you don't want... It's not a great feeling. It's like, ah, what the hell, man? My monster. No editing all the software I used to use are trash now. I mean... I do all my audio editing on Logic X, which is a... came out, what, 2009? That's what I do all my audio editing on. Two foreign sets for Logarithm feel so wrong because that's a spooky build. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not had the best luck, but, uh... Did he go two and four? I thought he did better um, week one. I thought that's where I got some of my points. What video editing software do I use? I use Premiere. Two and four? So he's gone one and two both days. That's crazy. Oh no, two, two and two make top 16, and then 0 oh and two. Yeah, that's right. All right. Dougie wins it. He gets it. He does the dive. That's all she takes. So we're going 2-5 in the round robin was sad. Yeah, that was rough. Psychonaut and uh, Meow. You know what I wasn't surprised about in that round robin? Uncle Cracker getting third. Hell yeah, brother. Tied for first in his pool. That's a good ass build. Everyone building all these one life speed nonsense. Nah, man. Give me a cat with 900 power. Psychonaut and oh, um, meow. Here we go. Got that dog in him. You do got that dog in him. Sledge falls gonna land. It's big damage. Headbutt misses. Two in a row. Goes for a sledge fall at one life. That man is. He's on it. He's zooted. Oh. Punch gonna take it. We're going to game number two. Current project is a Kato named Drunkle Stan. Hell yeah. Got a scratch. Got a leaping kick miss. Laser Cutter 29? I like how his cutter is purple. It means his swords are also purple. That's great. Good for him. I'm happy for him. Twirling 2 gonna miss, but 9 seconds left on the clock. Meow is in the lead. Ooh, good damage there. Two in a row? Ah. You tried, kitty. You tried.
Gilded and Malenko. The thing is, we get these like really big tournaments now where it's like 40 of the monsters are from people who have been playing this game for years, right? There's obviously people who are new to the scene, but the vast majority of the monsters entered are like from really strong players. So getting uh, Owen 2 and stuff like that is uh, going to become more and more common. I also, I've noticed there's like, people are like afraid to do builds that other people have done. Everyone wants to do their own thing. And it's okay to just make the same monster someone else made. I consider new, yes you are. Everybody ranching now. Everybody ranching now. Everybody ranching now. A little bit quiet now. You entered complicated beats, true you did. I used to be in an old head. I remember when I was new to the scene. Yeah, believe it or not, guys, there was a scene before I started running tournaments. A lot of cool people ran events. Jack doesn't really run events anymore. Engine is MIA. He's doing his own thing, taking a break from the scene. Malenko wins that one 2 0 real quick, by the way. Plum and Crab Cyclist up next. I'm saying you should all run uh, clowns. I just mean, what I think about all the time, and the reason I brought it up is because of me personally. The build, uh, the UFO build, is almost identical to a build I made. It's it's like, it's just, it's, it's all the Nighton tax, right? There's nothing like special about it inherently. But I'm like, ah, I don't want to make that because Selvius made it. But it's like, I've. <laughs> I've already made that monster. It's real good. There's a reason it does so well. Alright, Plum, we're we gonna see some Cyclones. Remember, Engine used to watch his videos long ago? Yeah, he was, uh... He was in it. There was a while where he was, like, not working, so he was, like, putting out a shit ton of content and making some really cool stuff. And then, you know, he got a job, and he took a break. Plum's gonna take it. Cyclonic irrigation. It's pretty funny. That's a pretty good one. Oh, you hit somebody still in it. Another brow hit. That'll take it. The natural grit. Adriana's still one of the best monsters I've seen. Adriana was broken, yeah. In hard mode, I don't know if you guys knew. Or if you're aware. And I am pretty sure you're not aware because I've seen Macho's tournaments and none of you are using Undine's, but Undine is like stupid broken in uh, hard mode. Water gun and water cannon, or I don't know if water cannon even got buffed. I think it might have got a tiny buff, but water cannon got a pretty significant buff. And um, turns out buffing a move that's already very good, that was never used because, you know, people were using the uh, icicle arrow line instead. Uh, turns out that's a good way to break a monster. One of those things though where it's like, numerically it doesn't really seem super crazy, so it's hard to like put it into context. And when no one's using it, um, it makes it even harder, right? You can only do so much theory crafting. If you don't actually have people using the move, there's probably a reason for it, right? I knew he was kind of a heal for a while early on in uh, vanilla, yeah. Yeah, because she's really strong in this format, too. The smash. The smash! Is it going to be enough, though? Rear leg kick? That definitely won't do it, even on a crit. Auto flies takes game numero uno. Numero ocho. The smash hits. The big damage. The mamma mia. The triple smash. He's still in it though. Four in a row. Jesus Christ. I don't think she need to make it far simply for its weird build. It needs to start dodging. 
You got bopped. And I got Sockum boppered. The left jab. Pop, pop. Ooh, uppercut. Gonna do good damage. Put him in the yellow. He doesn't need the power, but power rear leg kick's not terrible. It's very accurate. It's like, what, plus 12? That's gonna do a good chunk. Oh my god, that is the first time in my life I have ever seen rear leg kick one hit. That is wild. The centaur is gonna take it. Do one for Kruger. Spanakopita and Alphonse up next. Don Cherry's Rock'em Sock'em Ranch and hell yeah. Did you ever have any of those tapes? I think I got one for Christmas once. Spanakopita and Alphonse. Here we go. That shit was like always advertised on hockey. Okay, Mr. Comrade Bob, I got a question for you because I mentioned this. Uh, to some of my other friends, but they're friends that only um, had too young for Rock'em Sock'em. Okay, that was like that was the '90s, right? But yeah, um, there was this guy. And this all depends on if you watched hockey or not. If you didn't watch hockey, as I turned out, you have no idea who this guy is, because I talked to my friends who uh, only ever watch basketball, and they're like, "Yeah, I don't know who he is." Um, there was this guy who used to take out tons of advertising on NHL, NHL games in Canada here. And, uh, oh my god, why is his name escaping me right now? I gotta look it up. It's gonna drive me insane. Alphonse takes that one. We're 1-1. One, one. Give me one second. There's this, like, guy, like, super, like, Guido. Um... God damn, what was his name? You're invested now? Okay. But he used to take out a shit ton of ad time. And it was for, like... He always had a new business. Um, okay, I gotta look this up. Frank D'Angelo. I remembered as I was typing it into Google before it didn't even came up. Frank D'Angelo was this guy who is like a cryptid if you watched hockey in Canada in the 2000s because he would take out millions of dollars worth of ad time to pitch whatever fucking product he had up next. Also a rolling slash of 38%. Goddamn, dude. Um, but... I think the craziest one he had, there's a lot of insane stuff, but the craziest one he had was an energy drink called Cheetah Energy. And the spokesperson for that was Ben Johnson, disgraced runner Ben Johnson, who was banned and had his records stripped for doping, for taking steroids. And the tagline of the video was Ben Johnson saying, I cheetah all the time. <laughs> Which is just the craziest shit to make someone say. Um, just, just a wild thing to say. Need a commercial for this? Okay, we'll see if we can find it later. Cheetah Energy. I'm sure you could find it. Oh, we got a duck fight? A duck fight. Woo! But yeah, Frank D'Angelo, he was, um... But, like, he owned a brewery in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, Steelhead Brewery. It was terrible beer. It went under. But he's one of those guys where it's, like, his family had so much money, and his dad owned, like, a big, like, food corporation or whatever. So he kept just financing all these, like, fail son projects every single business he's been jesus we're going to game three already um every business he's had has gone under and yet he's still a millionaire and it's like how and the answer is crime like that's got to be the answer right but 
you don't open a factory and have it go under and then open another factory and have it go under and still have a shit ton of money unless, you know, you're doing something shady. But the duck is going to win that. The other duck is going to lose it. But he did hit the explosion, so that's pretty slick. Apparently it still exists in South Africa. Oh my god. Deo and Bonsai. I wonder if it's the same thing or not. It's our revolution, it's our generation, and night on D's nuts. Damn. Um, but, so the energy drink was, you know, that's a crazy commercial to run. The beer makes perfect sense for hockey, obviously. Um, the, the less, um, calculable things are his Christmas album. His many, many movies he's made. <laughs> Frank D'Angelo, look him up. It's crazy. His Wikipedia page is so funny, man. It's just like a list of failed businesses. And then he ran for mayor of Toronto this year, which is great. And we're sitting there, me and my friend, who are like both like big fans of his in like the super big air quotes way big fans we're like oh christ he's running what's his platform and then we looked it up and it's like super progressive it's super like uh defunding or like rerouting funds from um like what do you call it from um the salaries of like uh council and shit like that to like fund homeless projects and like uh, come up with uh, new like um, activities and stuff for like inner city kids and like it was a lot of stuff and it, we were looking at it like totally ready to be like this dude's gonna be like super right wing uh, no taxes for anything and it was just like damn I'd vote for him he's crazy and I'm pretty sure he's got like a like multiple rape charges but uh, you know he seems like a really shitty person with good politics and that can happen. You can have a really shitty person with good politics. Not sick, actually. Yeah. <laughs> He's a launderer for the people. <laughs> Rape charges, that's the catch, yeah. That's the catch. I, to be fair, I don't think he's been found guilty of anything. That's on the... Look at the Wikipedia page and, uh, you know, do your own research, because... It's certainly something. It's all alleged. It's one of those not found not guilty situations. Like he was, like he wasn't found not guilty, but uh, something happened, and then uh, is that one one? Sexual assault allegation, libel sued by next Maple Leaf obstruction of justice. Hell yeah, it is one one, right? Yeah, I accidentally ended that too early. Well, Clinton had her economy doing great, and he was a shitty person. I feel like the internet helped a lot with that, dude, though. And then it didn't. Uh, Bonsai. Found not guilty, but the judge said he made... Oh, yeah, that's right. The judge was like, yeah, he probably did it, though. Which is just the craziest thing. <laughs> Holy shit. I forgot about that. I knew it was like a situation where- oh my god. Cyclone. Dale is gonna take it. I knew it was a situation where it's like, he's probably guilty, but I forgot if it was like he paid off the jury or what it was. Dr. Thermidor and Quiver up next. But uh, yeah, the judge being like, you know what, the guy probably did it is so funny. I mean, like, not funny, like, you know, my heart goes out to the victim, but... He's a character. He's an old school character. We don't, we don't have a lot of those left, you know? Like a comic book character, like, not like a real person. Money is useful, who'd have thought? He's something alright, yeah. Apparently Frankie D fired a Leafs player from being a cheat ambassador because the guy got his news leaked by his ex-girlfriend. No way. Oh my god. 
Cited a morality clause? Yeah, okay. That's a good way to lose a lawsuit. Sounds like a sitcom character. Every episode he has a new business. And then he does unspeakable crimes on the side. That are not a laughing matter. But it's so... It's... it's Like... You can't really talk about him without mentioning that. Because, like, obviously that's super messed up. But you... I feel like you can separate, like... The insane stuff with like the truly deplorable stuff. Nothing about it's good, right? Like none of it's good, but there's it's okay to laugh at, you know, the stuff that's not like incredibly terrible. It's funny, how does this person exist? It doesn't make sense. Quiver's gonna take that? Holy moly. That's that. Next up we got Big Beat and also Odorous. He did, in fact, lose the lawsuit, yeah. Does Big Beat have that dog in him? We'll find out. He's about to cheetah all the time. Dr. Quiver takes out. Is for hard mode lacking Undine? I haven't had the urge to raise one. I, did, I just don't like Undine. It's simple as that. All right, big beat. Is he gonna make the victory road run or is he gonna get beat by the ape? Boomerang, pretty good damage. There's the anger though. Punch gonna do a big chunk, holy moly. Laser cutter 39, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he likes that laser cutter, man. I gave it to him and he's like, I'm gonna use it. Game number two. Low kick lands. Slap can do a little bit of damage. A lot of withering on that. Good wither rolls. You know, if you're not going to do damage, you might as well wither. But another kick is going to take it. Not what the monkey wanted to do, obviously. Propeller head sponsoring the hanger. Uh, Troa and let's go, Obub, up next. Wow, this is a round one losers, eh? Because Selvi and uh, Lily had to fight each other. Placing Frank D'Angelo snugly into my brain and weird things I now know, right next to Pablo Escamara's co cocaine hippos. <laughs> Frank D'Angelo is, um, yeah. It's, I don't know, like, obviously the sexual assault shit is very, very off-putting. And it's not a but situation, it's not like it's off-putting but the guy's crazy. Like, it, you can't, like, pretend it didn't happen. But it's, I say, and then I say, but. Um, in addition to that, he's also fucking crazy. Is cocaine hippo related to house hippo? Yeah, it's the the faster one. Kato's scary. It's one of the benchmark monsters you tested your middleweight against. It is a good monster. Troll is pretty good too. You know, it doesn't have the max life, but. Uh, it is a joker. Old time hockey has some really crazy characters. Brother, this was like 1999 to like 2008. <laughs> An old timey? God damn, I'm old now, I guess. And how simple are you? Looked pretty fast scurrying. Eating that uh, the peanut butter on toast. He's a great rancher with some bad bracket luck. Yeah, Lily's great. Well, he's a very strong player. Does he still take ad space up from the NHL? No, I don't think so. I haven't watched terrestrial TV in a very long time, though. So, I don't know. Oh, let's go, bub. We're going around two, bub. Okay. So, that is round one losers done in the books. I love bringing up House Hippo to Americans, they scratch their heads. It's pretty good. It's a good, good little uh, commercial. 10 years of NHL ad sounds insanely expensive. Yes, like he spent literally tens of millions of dollars on these ads for all these failed businesses. 
and a Christmas album that nobody bought, and uh, a regular album that nobody bought. What am I doing? It's obviously the wrong one. What's really funny is I remember watching like one of the ads for one of his uh, videos, or not video, one of the ads for his uh, album, and he's like trying real hard to be like a crooner. But I remember watching it and being like, this sounds like fucking like <laughs> mighty mighty boss tones. This doesn't sound like a Frank Sinatra. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I wonder what monster those albums are trying. Oh my god, do I gotta buy a Frank D'Angelo album now? To test it out. Co-commentator Wolverine is back. He's not back yet. He's still in his room. Ooh. A little bit of damage. Holy shit. Thinking about Gene, yeah. The energy shots. The big damage energy shots. A little punch. Into the Dive Assault, that's gonna do a chunk. Not enough. Claw Assault, not what he wants, but it does put him in slot 4 and hits the 56 energy shot. Oh my god, man. He's got power. He's gotta use his intelligence. No, he's a power monster. What am I talking about? Oh, is he gonna run it out? That flying press with power? Damn, dude, that's a lot. It's on Spotify, then you don't have to buy shit. Yeah, but I can't put Spotify. <laughs> yeah, JP. <laughs> you big dummy. Meteor is gonna take it. Mateo moves on. JP really on like an entire other plane of of thought, you know? Trying to DX is based on Spotify though. Is it? Who told you that? It's literally just a list of songs. Cool Runnings and Lanny Poffo. He is on Spotify. We're not going to listen to it, though. <laughs> right. Finally, a division match for you. So I thought about it, and I was like, the division matches are so random, right? They're pretty hype, but they do just, like, randomly award points. And for a while, I was like, maybe it wasn't a good idea to add this. But then on second thought, I'm like, it's Monster Rancher. It's random. It's based on Spotify. And here I've been buying Switch games from Nintendo like a big dummy. You could have got them on Spotify. You could have been playing your Netflix games. I mean, has anyone here ever played the games on Netflix? Netflix has games, by the way. You guys weren't aware. A little slap. Miss the kiss. Did not know this. Yeah, it does. You can uh, download games on Spotify. Or not Spotify. Oh, no. oh, he's got real? Damn, dude. And it's over now. Now you're dead if you get hit. Jab not going to do anything. You run out the clock. The kiss on the last second. 500 damage. 81 guts down. God damn, dude. He got it. Setting up a bracket of division matches in mind wouldn't be an awful idea, but a lot of extra work. It also depends on who shows up, right? It's, it's a lot of stuff to do day of. I would have to close everything like um, like an extra day early. Lanny Poffo, gonna take that one. Grub Sauce and Raincoat up next. RF in coat. Wow. Profanity. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Bob, you don't need more points. I need more points. I barely have any. I got like nine or something. I think I might be up to like 11. You have two, hell yeah. 
I'm like third or fourth in my division. The firewall from the raincoat. Thought I had 15? No, I'm not at 15 yet. Tied for second with 15? When did I get 15? What the hell? I'm 100% at 15. Oh, okay. I thought I had less. Two weeks ago? Wild. I know I got a lot of points for that one. I got like 9 points or something for the... But I must have counted wrong when I was doing it in my head, because I thought I was less than that. Raincoat! Using all the elements to his advantage to win that one 2-0. Pretending he doesn't have 15 and hoping he doesn't get a target. Tronobo and Combo Clan up next. I legit thought I was doing worse. I, you know, as much as I was like a little bit salty last week when I lost, I was mostly salty because JP was open his mouth, but uh, it's sort of like, I want to do well, but I'm more so uh, invested in the tournament doing well, right? You were mega salty last week? It happens. The thing is, and like I've gotten better at it, um, none of this shit matters. Like it's, there is an investment and you know, you feel attached to your monster and you want them to do well, but like at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter, right? So much of it is RNG. If you're constantly winning, then maybe your monster is good. You got something like UFO that's constantly in top 16. Obviously, a very strong monster. But if UFO got 0 and 2 next week, it would be like, damn, that's crazy. But also, you know, entirely understandable. Because that's how the game works. He missed the 99? Didn't matter. He won anyway. Be nice to be considered a strong rancher in the community. I guess there's some of that. You used to take this stuff way too seriously. It's not healthy. Yeah, uh, I was actually thinking about it today. I used to do Pokemon drafts all the time. And I used to like run the leagues and it was a lot of work, but I really liked it. Oh shit, the power grab throw? That is wild. That's big damage. Um, but the thing about it is that when I had a game coming up, it's all I could think about. I would like stress over it. I would spend like literally like three or four days just doing nothing other than like work and then team building. And there is no prize, right? I'm just a competitive person by nature. And when I won, it would be like the best high. And when I lost, I would be like legitimately dejected, like I would go to bed. And it sucked and it was kind of like, you know, not to make light of uh, manic depression or bipolar disorder or something, but it really felt like depending on how I did, like, that determined whether or not I was going to have a good week. And that's not really healthy, right? To be that invested in it. It's one of those things where it's like, I've always been a competitive person. And there's some things I've been competitive in that I've been very, um, very invested in. There's some things I've been competitive in, like Smash Bros or something like that, where it's like, you know, I want to do well. Damn, it happened to him? That's crazy. Like, I want to do well, and I practice to become better, but um, it was never like that. It was never that, like, intense of a feeling. But there's been other things I've done in my life that have felt like that, and um, it can be really hard to separate yourself from that. It's difficult. I'm diving press of my own. Look at that. We're going to game three. Feels sad when I lose, but it depends on how the rest of my life is going. <laughs> yeah, there's also some of that. The Cyclone, he picked up a dog. A big old dog. Put him in the air. That's gonna be it. Dang on it. Dang on it, gonna beat every tank. The fact he lost one against that is, uh... That's spooky. We got Psychonaut and Divinity up next. Sounds like me and sports have gotten better over the years. I used to get really upset when sports teams lost for a day or two after. I was probably not a very good teammate. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, how I used to play rugby and stuff like that. 
and there is there's one thing from uh, rugby that has like stuck with me my whole life ever since it happened and i have a lot of good memories playing rugby right and i remember at the end of the year you know we didn't do great but you know we we won some games and all that and i remember talking to one of the guys on the team and i was like oh well like you know it wasn't great but at least it was a fun season and he was like yeah i had a lot of fun being called a moron by you all season and i was like i don't even remember doing that i don't remember being that bully but apparently that was me and that shit has been stuck in my head for 20 years i feel so genuinely bad about it and it's like i i know what i can be like when i'm being competitive but like i genuinely don't remember calling him names ever it's like something in my brain like shut it out and uh he wouldn't have said that if it didn't happen he wouldn't have said that if i hadn't been like that to him but uh it's just like damn dude i feel bad it sucks who would pay money for this album <laughs> We're going to game three. He the moment regrets? Yeah, for sure, but still, I mean, you know, I'm, I've gotten better at, like, being like, it's okay, I, like, you're a teenager, right? You make mistakes. Um, Divinity's not going to be able to learn anything, though. She just got her head pounded in. Big old brain lesions. Helmet and Malenko up next. I can't be forgiven for that. <laughs> I hope the guy's still not mad at me. I think he's in a band that's doing pretty well, so good for him. Divinity has CTE. She can't remember her kids' names now. There's a lot of people who bet on sports and they really shouldn't. We go way too far on social media players. Oh, there's that too, yeah. I mean, there's such a weird parasocial relationship in sports. And like, luckily my stream is still small enough that like I don't really get it. I get it occasionally where someone's like kind of bizarre about, you know, talking to me or whatever. And it's really off-putting and I don't know how to deal with it. But um, there's this whole idea, right? Like there's this whole thing in the brain of people who are like obsessed with betting and things like that, where the person on the other end isn't actually a real person. They've like completely compartmentalized them as like a person who works for them. And that's why they feel entitled to be angry. It's like, you are like, I lost money because of you that's your fault and it's like no you're you're a loser monster entry is always something i've been pretty consistently cared about pretty competitive lead to be honest i used to be hyper competitive about everything even when i didn't want to put in the time to get better just expect that good would eventually come while simultaneously assuming i could win whenever i don't know, I could be more competitive with monster entry and grinding hope my mental able to see the fruits of my labor yeah that's cool it's um i like monster rancher because it gives me something to be competitive in where it's kind of out of my hands and you know maybe i get mad that my monster is being super dumb but it also because you relinquish a lot of the control to the ai it's easier to like get over it and not be upset the worst is when you compete and you fail, and it was entirely your own doing. And maybe you could have played better, maybe you just got completely dominated. But either way, both of those feel bad. And they feel much worse than just, like, losing, because, you know, your monster decided to use his intelligence basic over and over again. Gambling addiction is so sad. I used to work at a gas station. People would blow a ground and scratch off some minutes. I know. I uh, have family members who are like that. Getting involved with things that are competitive have a lot of randomness would be good for me. 
Kokoro takes game one. I was like that too, and I I would go through like phases where like I would play card games or I would play Pokemon, and uh, then I would be like, th there's not enough like mechanical play in this, and then I would only do fighting games, and then I'd be like, this is too deterministic. I want something that's a little bit goofy and. Uh, you know, not set in stone. So I'd go back to card games or Pokemon, and you know, it's cyclical. I can't believe he dodged the Kamikaze. How dare he? Plum's gonna take it. 2 1. Fleshless and Gummy Worm up next. Being competitive in FGC is so taxing emotionally. It really is. Uh, you guys can probably find it if you search for it. Uh, there's... it's not a VOD. Um, but there's this guy who was in the Smash scene when I was in the scene, right? And... We had... we did doubles, and his uh, partner in the doubles game is an extremely strong player. Ended up being one of the best players in the country. Um, he was not particularly good and I remember I went to one weekly he was holding and they were like super nice and friendly and all that and uh, we did doubles and I lost to uh, him and his partner with a random that I had never met and like I know them now and you know I'm friends with them they're great people but I, I had never met them before and so we lost them in grand finals and then he started talking shit on uh, Facebook about it. And I was like, dude, I didn't even have a partner. Like, it was some random person I'd never met before. And so I'm like, I'm talking shit back. But I'm a lot better at talking shit than a lot of people are. And I think I hurt his feelings, like, really bad. This is all, like, way in the past. But uh, uh, he challenged me to, like, $50 first to five or something like that. And I ended up beating him. And he did it in like a really fucked up fashion where he waited at a weekly until I was super drunk and then challenged me and then like made a big scene about it. Gummy Worm's gonna win that one, by the way, with two copters. And I still beat him. I was like barely coherent and I still beat his ass. And then uh, he made a big post about it, how like, oh, we're doing a rematch and this and that. And, you know, I was feeling myself a little bit because, um, I, like, I beat him when I was, like, I could barely, like, stand up, right? And so I'm like, yeah, okay, we'll do it for $100. And I make a big Facebook post. Basically, I cut uh, a promo, right? Like, I was like, this will be a fun time to, like, get into some creative writing exercises. So I write, like, a promo. And it was pretty funny. And I thought it was great. And I think, again... It like really, really like irked him. And I don't know why. Like he would like talk shit and then I would talk shit and then it would seem like, oh, this is serious now. Like he's actually upset now. And like it wasn't really my intention ever. And so like I felt a little bit bad about that. But I was running an organization that, or I was helping run an organization, it wasn't just me, that uh, was running. Uh, an Arcadian. What an Arcadian is, is only unranked players are allowed to play. And then the ranked players show up and they give like coaching advice and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And as an exhibition at that event, I was going to play him in a $100 money match. And I ended up losing it. I was like super, super uh, like playing to the crowd and like trying to get everyone hyped up. And because it really didn't matter to me. It, uh, it was at an event I was running. I was already pocketing like quite a bit of money from it. Um, we put most of the money back into the community, but you know, we all got paid for our work. And so, you know, it was a good day's pay. And losing a hundred bucks to make 500 bucks or whatever it was, was, you know, that's not a bad trade. No one's gonna be upset about that. But in heat of the moment at the end of the, f the match when I lost, this one guy, who was like cheering against me, picked up a chair and like slammed it on the ground. We were in like a, were we in a ballroom or were we in a, like a university or something? And he slammed down the chair and he started like stomping on it. Like he was like trying to break it. 
And I went over and I, and I like grabbed it. I'm like, dude, like stop that. Like, I'm going to have to pay for that if you break it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're going to fight this guy? Like, you grabbed him. Like, are you guys going to fight? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have grabbed them, but it was just out of the corner of my eye. I see this guy freaking out over the win in the most bizarre way possible, which is stomping a chair to death. And I remember it was just like, I shouldn't have touched him. I shouldn't have like put my hands on him, but like, it's just like, stop. What the fuck are you doing? And it was like, what game was this? This was for Smash Bros. And it's like a match I wasn't like super invested in, right? And was this a wedding where there were wine vikings there? No, there was not. And, but even though I wasn't like super invested, and I didn't really care about the win, and the whole thing was done as promo to get more people to come to the event, and it ended up, you know, letting me pocket more money in the first place. Um, the heat of the moment, uh, you know, the competition, it gets to you. And I was just like, damn, dude, like... But, and so even though it wasn't really something that, um, that, that poor Gaboo, he's been getting his ass beat. Uh, you can't dodge anything. Gormagander and Headed Duck up next. But even though it was a match that was mostly meaningless for me, and I didn't really care about the outcome, and you know, 100 bucks would have been nice, but I had already won. It was just a victory lap. I assumed I was going to win again. And, uh, you know, the organization made a lot of money. It's still like, it mattered a lot at that moment. Out of nowhere. It was just like, it was the most important thing in the world. And afterwards, I remember feeling really dejected. And I'm like, you know, losing sucks. Losing never feels good. But I didn't care until that guy tried to stomp the chair to death. And I grabbed him. And I was like, I still don't even know if the grab was like an overreaction. But it was just like, dude, what are you doing? And that little interaction was enough to just like make me feel like completely dejected and i was like i don't know if i want to play smash anymore and i don't know if that had anything to do with the game or like what caused it but i think it was just the adrenaline rush of competition at the end and then seeing that for whatever reason like snap something in my brain and then it was like at that point i stopped caring about the game like i was like i didn't want to run events anymore um all over this match that I didn't care about until game 10, you know? Yeah, that was 1-0. Uh, German Gander. That's what competition can do to you. Competition, not even once. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, I just remember having this dejected feeling at home in bed afterwards and just being like, I didn't even care. Why am I so bothered? Like, and you know, it's just chemical reactions, man. And also me and that guy are like, we're, we're very friendly now. He's, he's a cool dude. I play Monster Ranch for the only enemies the game itself and sometimes JP, that's true. I think we've raided his stream a couple of times. The guy I lost to. The guy tried to stomp the chair to death, I don't know. I like barely ever spoke to him before and I definitely don't now, but Alright, 2 -0. The Hound and Deo up next. Also, I apologize if you're one of those monsters that just lost and you feel like, why isn't he commentating over my matches? It's because my head is killing me right now. Um, I, I just put the Y in there randomly. That's not going to be enough phase. I have just an insane headache right now. And I feel like doing a commentary, <laughs> like good commentary, would probably make it worse. 
Hey, Evie, with the six raiders, how are you doing? Rolling slash 28%, I'm gonna miss. The brow hit kill, goddamn. So remember at EVO this year, I was sitting playing friendlies for Tekken, and across my setup there were two South American guys who were playing a money match. They were super into it, had people holding up cards. We were trying to advertise the fight, and no one was paying attention. That's pretty great. Don't run over here, how's the tournament going? It's going good. Yeah, I felt bone bad because both were super into it, yeah. There was some hidden Florida man in your DNA somewhere. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? At EVO, it's, uh... Finding people who care is going to be difficult. Deo trying to take this right now. This is the kick. We got 60 entrants in this tournament. So it is, um... It's going... It's going about as well as it can. Oh, we get the kick at the last second. De is That's 2-0 for Deo, right? We had the raid and all that, and I was reading stuff. I'm pretty sure Dale won game one, right? Yeah. Technically cared. They were talking all, taking all the chairs for friendlies. So I had to tell them to give me one. Wait, they were taking the chairs so people could, like, watch? That's stupid. That's very dumb. For a fucking money match? Just at, at the friendly station? That shit doesn't matter. That a phantom and quiver. It doesn't happen very often, but every now and then, there's a personality in uh, the FGC who's like very much um, like m like self-important to like a bizarre level where like there's no reason for them to think that about themselves. I've dealt with people like that, and um, it's just I don't know why they're like that. Like it's a fucking video game. Most people don't care. Most people in the world don't care at all. And on top of that, most people in your community also don't care. You know? It's funny as those whole Florida man things. Florida just had all those articles more available outside local news. All of America is just like that. That's true, yeah. Taking other section seats and still not having anyone pay attention makes it seem even sadder. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, that a phantom. He's hitting it. Quiver. It's the cold fog. A little bit of damage. The Colossal going to take it, though. Going to game two. Yeah, Florida Man could also be, like, rural Idaho, you know? Just that rural Idaho doesn't have the same access. Ohio Man, yeah. <laughs> you see Fury Splash, 334 damage. A lot of withering. Not enough to kill. If he stays in slot one, he's safe. If he goes in any other slot, he dies. I'm going to game number three. Mississippi man! He does what he can. Mississippi man! He does everything. Roll assault's at 50%. That's pretty good. You ever see someone try to commit homicide with corn? I have not. He's got the real! Will it save him? It will not. Quiver is gonna take that one. That two one. Bahamut zero and big beat. Ooh, so it's come down to this, eh? Good luck. Like <laughs> distinct covers, yeah. Better win this. I want to win it. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to win it. Do I get hit with trample and still live? Is that what's going to happen? We're going to start in slot four, though. Oh, wait, does he have glide charge? Let's find out. Oh, it's the slamming down build. Laser cutter opener? Oh my god. All right, one more of that, please. I would look a uh, laser cutter crit combo. Game number two. Low kick and do a little bit. Tail attack. Good chunk there. Hammerfall going to do a chunk as well. They're in slamming down range. Goes for wing combo instead. How much? A little bitty. Gets fury though. Into the trample? Damn. Gave him fury and then finish the job. You done, kid. 
Game three, here we go. It's already been a great set. Glide charge, a little bit of damage, a little bit of withering, gives him anger. Hammerfall, big damage, not enough to kill, gives him fury. What do we have? Another hammerfall. 666 and the grit, they both got 40 guts. Slamming down's gonna hit. Are you kidding me? I lose to fucking grit again? Oh well. It happens. That was a fun set. I always lose to the most unfortunate grits. Grit where I'm like slightly out of range to attack again. Womp womp. Fun set. GG's. Shape of Lamer and let's go, old bub. Up next. Also, the monsters use like all their techs, which is neat. It's it's different when it's like they only use one attack over and over again. Big Beat got top uh, 16 last time, I think. Okay, Shape of Lamer, let's go, Wobub. Up next. Thought I wanted to beat your ass for a division score, and the points above 15 bonus. You th you oh you thought you were gonna beat me with the mochi? That's pretty funny. Splash gonna miss. Ooh. That single hit, it's all it takes. Do Joker chips actually work in combination? No chips work in combination. Like they sort of do. Oh, turn claws. Hits it. But yeah, the, the Joker chips and the Galley chips don't really work. Bub gonna take it. Duo. See that Mochi's placing above Big Beat regardless? You also got a buy. You went one and one. You're one and one so far. If you lose, you did just as well as I did. So. Next time, you know, just for that, you're never getting a buy again. I'm gonna make sure when we start that you don't get a buy. Mateo and Lanny Poffo up next. This guy's Mochi goes one and one and he's like, I'm doing better than you. Shut the fuck up. Go read a book. Go learn to read a book. Get out of here. Brother couldn't even get points with Kamui. What the fuck? Here he is talking shit. Imagine. Imagine entering a Kamui and not getting points. Crazy. The double energy shots? That's so much. That's so much withering. I beam gonna do big damage. Slot four start two, yeah. Oh, the spit's enough. He takes it. Game number two. I beam lands. Energy shot can do a little bit, but it's not really what he wants. Spit KOs are so funny, yeah. Damn, big damage. Alright. Raincoat and Throw an Elbow up next. Guys, I think we're gonna get done tonight. I don't want to alarm you, but I I went 0-2. I didn't go 0-2. You actually are illiterate, right? You know that, right? Why do they let you in a hospital? They let you, like, administer care to people? Like, or do they have you, like, sweeping the floors? Like, what do you do? 
I didn't go 0 and 2. You're just like actually not there. JP is in a hospital as a patient. That would make yeah. The, you know it all checks out. Raincoat, the one hit kill. Look at that. They just let him believe he works there. It's free labor. <laughs> Oh shit, the crit? Well, we got crits on both sides, baby. We're going to game three, just like that. Rowan misses. A little bit different than last game. 30 seconds left, nobody's landed nothing. Nothing know-how. Swing throw at 40? They're only swinging the big stuff, eh? Whirlwind and swing throw. Firewall miss. The straight? Is the straight going to be the victory here? Oh my god. He gets him with the big blue hand. That's all it took. He got him. <laughs> the one power tech. That's all it took. Dag on it and Psycho not up next. Oh my god. I kind of like, hate that's how it ended. That was certainly a way for it to end. I respect it. It's pretty funny if you're not the one who had either of those monsters. That's all I'm going to say. If I had one of those monsters, it would be a lot less fun. But what are you going to do? Ooh. Damn. Look at that. Almost a cyclone of his own. Plus, I'm winning my next set anyway, so who cares? 2-2 two, two is still better than 1-2. If I don't win that set, I'll donate 10 bucks, no joke. I mean, you guys heard him. This man's gonna donate his entire... his entire daily wage. Cyclone effects went on for too long? Yeah. Ooh, the big miss. And the hammer fall? Womp womp. Psychonaut's gonna take it 2-1. Okay, let me uh, update this. 2-1 for Raincoat, and Lady Popo gets the two wins there. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 more matches, and then we're in top 16. We're gonna make it, folks. Malenko and Plum up next. Starting a stream is a lot, like when you've done it a lot and you're like, it's become a routine for you and it's not like an exciting thing to do anymore, is a lot like working out where it's like, getting started is very difficult. Working up like the, what do you want to call it? The, like the wherewithal to like get the stream started and like actually get everything set up. Feels like an ordeal a lot of the time. And then you, uh, and then you get started and it's great. Just like working out. Malenko gets game one. There's a cyclone though. So we're going to game three. Hands on the juice. He's, he's keyboard juicing. The two cyclones? Oh my god. Well, that's certainly a way to lose. You know, I lost a really exciting match. I could have lost that way. Um, I'll, I'll take it exciting any day over the Cyclones. Also enjoy the time noise. Yeah. Um, that's going to be fun. Gummy Worm and Kruger. It might actually beat the time noise. It's got Cyclone. Twenty-eight percent, yeah. Twenty-two after it hits, and he has no guts left.
Okay. Here we go. Oh, that's a big opener. And by opener, I mean closer. That's the whole game. Naga vs. Golem is slot 3 start, so it could be interesting. It's like right on the edge, right? Brow Smash crit just ended too, it could, yeah. The cannon at 29, gonna miss. Ooh, triple stabs, is it gonna be enough? 481. Cougar honey, <laughs> gotta dodge. We're going, uh... Jell open closed all the matches, it's true, that's been his MO. Beam gun 35, it lands, but he's got no guts left. Three leg kick, it's at 65. Kruger's still got a lot of chances here to attack. Hits it, puts him below half. The pierce lands, almost no damage on that though, it's a power attack. He's got no power. The stab throw at 38! Oh my god, Kruger takes it, it's moving on. One win away from top 16. Alphonse and Yorm. There's Kane over there in first place. <laughs> Often lay wait alone, yeah. They like Centaur in this format. It's really good at killing speedsters. Yeah, this is probably Centaur's best format. 3500 is very close, but I do think it's a little bit better than 2997. I really like this Durhan breed. Me too. It's my favorite. It's so bulky. His sword is so simple. I love it though. It doesn't even have a hilt. It's like they forgot to put the hilt on the sword. It looks cool. Ooh, he can't some of the cutting too. Game number three, here we go. It's just the machete, yeah. The shading on it is really nice. Like, they did a really good job of making it look like it's not two dimensional, you know? Ooh. The Yorm's gonna take it. Yormy. Yormy takes that one. 2 1, it's moving on. Deo and Quiver up next. Golem gonna try and get some revenge for getting catfished by Undine. Which is a thing that actually happens in the anime. He gets friend zoned. Centaur is also really good in 2997. That's true, he is. Such a bitch in the anime, yeah, she's mean. It's the forehead. Theo gets the punch, the charge comes out, but it does not land. The arrow gonna do a big chunk. Quiver with the two arrows back to back. Takes game one. Doesn't mind being friends, he's a sweet guy, it's true. Even after she's evil, and uh, she tries to kill them all, he still wants to be friends. Still got that tier 3 sub, you know? Punch lands. Icicle arrow gonna miss. The charge cannot land. I don't think he's landed it once today. Splash miss. Punch. Big ol' punch. The kick misses as well. 15 seconds left on the clock. Gets hit with the arrow. She takes it. Just like she takes his money. I need to have more in Texas slot. When do you think she would be better? Um, No. I don't think... Uh, what am I trying to say here? I don't think the uh, Ice Sword is what holds her back. 
I don't think anything really holds her back. Splash is fine. It's not a great tech, but, you know, it's obviously very necessary. Um, having more would make her better. But I think she's in a good spot where, like, she's really strong. And she's got one serious weakness, but the serious weakness isn't really uh, talked about much when people talk about how strong she is. It's not really a thing when people talk about Undine. They're like, oh, also, by the way, she does have Ice Sword, which really sucks for her kit. It doesn't really come up like that. It, it, obviously, it's not great, but same way how, like, Raki is very strong, but, you know, you got the off basic. Or Suezo. Suezo is really strong. But both ways, it's going to have one off tech. It's not like Kato, where Intelligence Kato is extremely inconsistent because it's got two full slots it can't do anything about. Also, uh, that's some big drilling. Oops, my bad. I would have to fight the cat, eh? Cat's pretty good too. A lot of good monsters in this format. Also, uh, let's go lost in the first round. Is one win away, two wins away, I guess, from uh, top 16. Pretty good. Slamming down, and do Jesus. All right. Undine is kind of weird. She seems really good, but in some fashion, I see her just lose for no apparent reason. God damn. Slamming down, big damage. Uh, the reason she's losing, and I mean this sincerely, is because people are not building her right. They're picking a build that's strong, but they're not picking the best build, you know? I shank a lot and Lanny Poffo up next. This next round is for play ins in top 16. Like, if you want to win with Undine, you get Water Gun and you get Water Cannon. And that's really it. Everything else is kind of either explicitly worse or, you know, a choice you could make that isn't inherently better. Did Lunaria have the best build? I don't even know what that is. That was yours, but I don't remember what the build was. But yeah, it's water gun, water cannon. And then maybe arrow. Getting the water cannon line by itself takes a bit of ranching, though, how to do. It's not easy, but it's uh, it's very, very strong. And it's not like the, the arrow line is bad. It's still good. There's still good techs. But when we talk about Undine being busted, that's what we're talking about. I shank a lot, did get the shank. I beam lands though, we're going to game three just like that. God damn. Two in a row? Pink eye. Moving on to top 16. Congratulations, I think. No. One, two, three, four. Yeah, top 16. Congratulations. We are in top 16 now. Raving Rabbit and Raincoat. Who else will make it to top 16? Water again, Cannon does a lot of withering, most likely going to hit, so I don't think they're really a commitment. I don't think so either. I think it depends on the format. I think for lower stack caps, Ice Cold Arrow is stronger because it's less commitment. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't inherently think that. It's kind of like, uh, what if a very fast guts rate monster had slamming down? That's basically what it is, right? Slamming down is a great opener against a lot of different types of monsters. Not great against everyone, but it's pretty solid most of the time. Icicle Arrow is very cheap, but it really only works specifically against tanks. Gallic Gel is a cool design. Yeah, it's probably my favorite. Brown Mask is like very close. Very close number two.
Missing cannon feels bad. But, I mean, it's like Gelcopter, right? Like, if you miss Gelcopter, yeah, of course it sucks, but it's plus five hit. Rabbit, gonna take game number two. We're going to game three. Or was that 2 0? I think that was. I think it was 1 1. Missing cannon absolutely feels bad. But it's more likely to hit than miss. Yeah, it is. You do have a better than 50% chance. Firewall, a little bit of damage, 10 seconds left. Raincoat gonna have a little bit of trouble here. Oh, the straight. Not what he wants to waste his time and guts on. Raving Rabbit moving on to top 16. That painting getting 17th place. We got Joan of Slash and Psychonaut up next. Is this a rematch? Why does this feel like we saw this fight already? Okay. We haven't? Who did Psycho not lose to? Nature Boy. And that's what it was. I don't know why I thought it was this guy. Clearly, Rinko should have used straight more. It's true. It did win him a set. It won him a set. It lost him a set as well, but it did win him a set. Ooh, Sledge Fall, five seconds left on the clock. She grits, but still gonna lose. Psychonaut wins game number one. Ooh, twist the slash. Million stabs gonna miss. 38%. Not a very good chance to hit anything. Laser cutter 34. 28. Mama Mia. Dash slash gonna take it. No, oh, he grits. He's still in it. Hammerfall miss at 32. Not a lot of time left on the clock. He's gonna need to go for something big, and he gets killed. He gets deaded. Game three, here we go. Sledge fall gonna land. Good damage there. Cut in two. Ooh. Ties it up. The rush slash gonna finish it off. Darahan's basics work very well in conjunction with one another. It's a pretty solid build just taking Durahan's basics. Jonah Slash takes that one. 2 1. Moving on. Hood Classic and Plum. The one we've all come to see. That's why we're here. You wake up, you'll look back to losing that one set to straight and laugh. Yeah, it was, it's pretty funny. When you're not when you're not involved and you're like removed from it, it's quite funny. Okay, can Plum do it? He's the monster for the job. Also, they don't start in slot three. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, this is a known matchup. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to be like, uh, excuse me, you're wrong. You don't know shit, Bob. But they do start in slot four. It's a specific known matchup that Cyclone Golem beats this guy in this format. It's the meta matchup, yeah. Anyway, GG's. <laughs> the one monster that could take it down. What guts rate did this Naga turn out to be? Eight. Cavity and Kruger up next. Golem vs. Naga is normally slot 4, yeah. The thing is, Golem is smaller than he seems. Like, he's still pretty big, but um, he's not like... He's like, what? Smaller than Worm, I think? Smaller than Color Pandora, smaller than Mox, smaller than B-Clon. And then Nog is slightly smaller than that. Depends on the breeds. I swear I've had matchups start in three. It depends on the breeds. I don't think it does.
So Kushida started in slot three versus Zulra. I mean, it'd be worth checking it out. It'd be worth testing it because it's, yeah, that's like a known matchup in 2997. Is that Golem? Cyclone Golem beats uh, Ripper. Ripper beats Kamui. Kamui beats Golem. Spike Stabs. Cavity gonna take game one. And Melner beats everyone, yeah. Yeah, Melner has no bad matchups. It has no even matchups. The closest thing is Ripper. Or Kamui. And Mono beats everyone and wins Koshin, that's true. Mono's very good. Melner's bad matchup is me banning him. Kruger's gonna take that. Who's next? We got Slimius Max and Jormungandr. One one? Was it one one? Okay. I thought uh, Kruger won game one. My bad. My bad. Cavity. Thank you for catching it. My mind's starting to go. That's the first time we've done it tonight, though. That's not bad. Alright, game three. Here we go. Big smash. Big smash. Another smash. Another one. Ooh, the flattening miss. The death thrust attempt for no reason. Rear leg kick's gonna miss as well. Cavity hanging out at 99 guts. Ooh, hits a spike bite. There's the grit, though. He's still alive, but he's got a 50 guts deficit. The horse goes down. The horse goes down. Cavity moves on. Very close. Very close set. Slimiest Max and Jorman up next. Yeah, that was quite a, a loser's run. He almost made it. Right before the finish line. I guess top 16 is not the finish line, but it's like the start of another race. I should have stayed quiet. I would have noticed later and, you know, we would have probably redone the set and seen what would have happened after. Slimius Max takes game number one. Lash miss. Whip. Whip. Ooh, the suffocation miss. I'm gonna write now in Hood Classic definitely starts in slot three against Dagon. Might be the big ass head. Maybe it is breed specific. That's pretty interesting. I didn't actually know that. But yeah, against the regular model golems, golem and naga start in slot four. So maybe like the mock and oh shit, maybe like wood golem and uh, dagon and things that are like sp specifically like very different shaped start in slot three. That's kind of interesting. As long as we get out of the size difference discussion with it being confirmed, it didn't do anything weird. I'm good. As long as we get out of this size difference discussion with it being confirmed, I didn't do anything weird. I'm good. What do you mean? What would you have done weird? I'm so confused. Mobius and Quiver up next.
Do you mean like you thought you did something weird with your monster? Starting slot four against Nagas. Oh yeah, no, no, that's that's completely normal. Yeah, no, it's it's known like that a regular golem fighting Naga will start in slot four. They gotta watch out for Cyclone. So for a long time, nobody ran drill attack, and then Naga started running drill attack specifically, hoping that they would swing before Cyclone came out. And that's the only reason the move exists on their loadout, even though you know it's very inaccurate, doesn't really do a ton of damage. The whip miss, the arrow miss, the ice arrow. Quiver's gonna take it. Talk about uh, Undine losing, eh, or Undine only losing. How many wins she got tonight? One, two, three, four. Four wins so far. Next up, we got Losers Round 1 in Bahamut Zero. This is our last play into Top 16. You learn something new every day. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know different uh, breeds had different sizes. It makes sense. It also explains why I had a little bit of, what do you call it? Like the Mandela effect about certain matchups. Where I'm like, oh, well, I know how this goes. And then they start in slot four instead of slot three or something like that. It's happened to me too with other monsters. Um, but now I'm realizing that maybe I wasn't wrong. Maybe I didn't misremember. And it's just, you know, it's possible that depending on the, the subbreed, it, they do change where they start. That's pretty cool. Y'all are hating? You do it to yourself, brother. All right. Everyone's cheering for the top tier here. Big damage, big withering. Press going to miss at 99. You hate to see it. But tail attack misses at 99 as well. Wing attack can do a little bit of damage. Headbutt, a little chunk. Just had two back to back 99 misses. You know what the chances of that are? It's literally 1 in 10,000. Oh. He's got enough. He hits the tail attack with anger. Muhammad Zero, one win away from making me $10 richer. Dragon combo spotted. Yeah, he's not going to use it in this matchup, though, I don't think. Not really going to get a chance to. Tail whip can do a little bit of damage. 1 2 thrust. Pow pow. Withering on that's pretty good. Loser's in trouble, though. Here comes the Tail Whip. There's the Grit. He's not out yet. 40 Guts. What does he do? Another 1-2 Thrust. A little bit of Withering. There's the Anger. He's going to have enough to attack. Who attacks first? That's what it comes down to. The Trample. JP. I don't know if you have to take out a loan. Um, but I am expecting that money soon. That's all I'm saying. Gonna go all out next week. I'm tired of losing. Well, you lost with the worst monster in the game, and you lost with like the second best monster in the game. So, obviously, your problem is that you're not picking something from the middle of the pack. All right, what do we got? 54 on generic. Trample, that's one. You weren't going all out before. Yeah. Imagine Smoke got analysis from Monster Rancher Comp, and then it's like this monster's not thick enough, so it escapes from frame one cyclone. <laughs> That's kind of what I do, though, right? My videos haven't been like that granular. I try to stay away from stuff like that for the most part, but uh, there's also just stuff that I don't know, right? It's interesting going back and watching them and being like, oh, I forgot to talk about X or Y. Also, that was an entire bet. That was an entire match. Timothy and Gooby up next. But I'm learning too. I'm always learning. Just when you think you knew everything about the game. I think that's one of the craziest things. When, uh... What's his name? Smiling Faces started posting. Oh my god. I cleared all my, uh cookies so it doesn't think I've ever done predictions before and it's giving me a tutorial predictions live who do you like 
Um, but yeah, when Smiling Faces joined the scene, it was just like, hey, uh, did you guys know you're like wrong about like all this math? And I was like, oh, okay. Who are you, crazy person? And then it turns out he was right about everything. Um, nature is based on some weird trigonometric function. Um, stress helps with uh, critical hit chance if your monster is bad natured. All this insane shit. And then we told Japan about the, the critical hit stuff and they were like, wait, hold up. Like, is this real? And so like Japan didn't even know. Just one guy. And then they started calling him the alien because he was like basically metalner who come down from the heavens to bestow knowledge onto everybody. 63% on Gooby. Triple stab's gonna do big chunk, not quite enough. Would have needed a crit for it. Three cubes? Hmm. Stab doesn't kill. Stab is gonna kill though. The spike top finisher, Gooby takes game one. It's funny how like it's crazy that it happened in our community, right? Um but it's a very small community, right? What's really crazy is when that shit happens in like a bigger game. And it happened in Mario Kart speedrunning like six months ago. Timothy's gonna take game two. We're going game three. Dodging the 99. Sometimes it's what it takes. We've seen a couple of 99 misses today. Figured out that defense in line also affects critical hit damage. That's really funny. So critical hit isn't just like straight 50%. It was 88%. Oh, okay. Well, that one was less and it hit two. Gooby gonna take that one. 2 1. Okay, Suplexi and Spike Strip up next. JP community learned about the breeding for multiple ones only because one of them found a teach YouTube video. Yeah, so they didn't uh, know that the ones were broken until they found the multiple ones, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, this works." Um, spike strip. What was the Mario Kart story? Oh, the Mario Kart story was um. This guy found a bunch of, t like, a ton of new glitches in uh, Mario Kart, like, to, like, do new shortcuts. And he just popped into Abney's stream. Abney's, like, the, the best Mario Kart runner in the world. And he was like, hey, by the way, can I, like, post something? I found something cool. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Because, you know, people do that shit all the time. And then it's like, oh, fuck, all this stuff is actually, like, good. <laughs> Predictions live, by the way. It's just like all of this stuff is like extremely like game breaking and like completely changes how any percent run works and like the individual levels will work and stuff like that. This happened to Abney twice and it happened like six months ago. Um, 89% on Spike Street. People like the wall. They covered the story on Summoning Salt's video. Oh, did they? That makes sense. Makes sense that Summoning Salt would have done a video on that. This also happened back in Mario Kart 64. Sorry, I'm conf Yeah, we're talking about Mario Kart 64. Spike by doing big damage. Spikes, you're gonna take it just like that. Bada boom, bada bing. We sports golf. Dude, the golf one is so funny. It's like, it's faster to not get holes in one is so crazy. We are thinking of the same story, yeah. Poor worm. Poor worm. The wall ate him. Haha, -ha, epic and UFO. Oh my god, we get this shit.
what a matchup this is. Thought I was talking about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? Oh no. Okay, let's get a prediction going. People really liked the wall on that one, and it worked out. Okay, prediction is live. Who do you like? Is Monol AI like Naga AI? Legit question. In what way? Like it just uses the best thing every time. The thing is, not uh, Monol doesn't have bad techs. If you make like the proper Monol loadout, everything he has is like very good. And the spikes your build is like oh aggro. I don't think uh, different monsters have different AI. I think it's based on arena movement speed more than anything else. Fifty-seven to forty-three, because we know how it uh, decides to like pick options and stuff. Oh shit! Big damage. The triple electric stabs. Ooh, oh, we're gonna take it. Yeah, so it's like at any given frame, there's like a check. And then for the next X amount of frames, nothing else can happen except for whatever it decided to do. Sometimes that's moving, sometimes that's standing still, sometimes it's attacking. And originally in the game, um, ooh, FO was gonna win that one. Originally in the game, um, it would check to see if um, a monster had more than 40 guts before it would choose to attack. Um, but because of the way it works in vanilla, it like it, it wouldn't work until they had more than 45 just because of some weird rounding error. So it wouldn't populate the chance to attack until they hit 40. And then every 10 guts after that, it adds an additional chance to attack to like the queue of things that can possibly happen. So at 99 guts, your monster is much more likely to attack than at uh, they are at 45. And then I think some of that was changed for this game because monsters swing a lot at like 10. Ultra Kaiju has different AI for monsters? Yeah. All right, Generic and Gooby up next. Yeah, AI in um, AI in UKMR is actually really fascinating. It's a really cool idea. It's just that because you can't choose it, you can kind you have a little bit of control over it, but like not a lot. And what ends up happening is if your monster just spawns the wrong one, it's like hell. Your monster sucks. Uh, okay, that goes to the snail. Start a prediction. Here you go. Who do you like? Prediction is live. So the one that um, really killed it for me is my monster, which I think is a really strong monster, the Metron Kali build. The power Metron Kali, or power uh, Metron build is pretty solid. It's just that I had uh, a rivalrous personality, and what that is is the monster has an extremely, extremely high chance to attack at any point in the match, as long as it has less than 50 guts. As soon as it has more than 50 guts, it has an extremely, extremely low chance to attack. And because Metron has such a fast guts rate, what would keep happening is he would just get over 50 guts, he would dodge one attack or whatever, and then he'd just never attack again. Yeah, I had rivalrous, yeah, it sucks. And so it completely ruined the monster. He would go entire matches attacking with like maybe one 10 guts attack and then never again for the rest of the match. It was awful. And then I raised the Suezo and dunked on everyone and then never played again. Kind of like generic just dunked on Gooby. Gel cube, it's going to be enough. You have 30 minutes to move your two cubes. Anything with Rivalrous is really bad. Yeah, it's like the worst. 
it's functionally very anti-monster rancher in the way it works. Tail whip's gonna land. Generic takes it. Gooby going to losers. Next up, we got Spike Strip and Uu F O O. Hanks can't be beat. Yeah, uh, turns out what everyone's been doing up until this point still works. Spike strip's real good though. Uh, okay. Prediction is live. People stopped running Cyclone Golems for one tournament. We only had like four, and this is what happens. You guys let this happen. Though that's also the only reason that we don't have a time noise in top eight. All right, what do we get on the prediction? 60% on Uwu. Hey, Slam Dunk. Thank you. Very kind. Something about replacing Lanny and then he goes on a run, proving me wrong. I think it's a good build. Oh, Spike Strip hits it. Look at that. Needle stabs, needle stabs. Electric whip though, that's gonna take it. Tank the two stabs and win it. I want to make three stat is Vex one monster so much. It's so funny because I've never heard anyone ever call it three stat. It makes sense. It makes sense. But people are building four stats in this quite often. But, uh, yeah, I've literally never heard anyone say that. But I know exactly what you mean when you say it. Nothing stops the shell, it's true. Three stat is weird to call it. Ooh, F O O takes that one. 2 1. Moving on to winner's finals with generic. But now we gotta go to losers. We got Lanny Poffo versus Raving Rabbit. Really important match. What makes it really important? That's respect for yourself. You're just remaking UFO for every format you can. Yeah, this is uh, this was like the first one she made it for. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I don't think she made it for this before uh, lightweight or heavyweight, and then the other one came later. This is the one that won a tournament in uh, one of. Uh, did it win the tournament or did it get like top two or something like that? But it beat a bunch of rippers in um, Kujira's tournament. It won grands. And everyone's like, what the fuck? And over here, we're like, yeah, turns out Niton's real good. And Japan's like, eh, no idea. Yeah. It's still not, like, better than Ripper. Like, it's not even close. But I think it has, like, an okay matchup against some of the better Mons. When you can't dodge it, it's fucking terrifying. Metal Shell specifically. Yeah, well, obviously. When I talk about Naga, I'm not talking about purebred Naga. I'm talking about Ripper. 87% on Lanny Poffo. When I talk about Swayzo, I'm talking about Pink Eye. Big damage. The big spit, but he's still in it. Another someone? Ooh, misses it. But he can win with Tail Assault now. <laughs> you know. I wish I could predict the lottery. Feel like we should have the purebred not a good conversation at some point? What conversation would that be? Gas doing a little bit of damage, but giving them anger. Oh, you got no guts left. You had 80, and now they're all gone. Ooh, the 
spit miss. Give him the kiss. Man, pure red Naga sure is purple. It's true, it is. How exactly strong is he? He's good. He's a good monster. Lanny Poffo gonna win that one. That was such a clutch kiss. That was the most clutch kiss I've ever seen. You're down like 70 guts. Not anymore. Jonah Slash and Plum up next. Never really seen it. It's It's got a cool gradient on it. It actually looks really neat. It goes from like a magenta almost. Almost a magenta. To like a, a deep like indigo color. Not quite, but... Um... Okay. So that went to Poffo. Big Poffo. Prediction is live. Who do you like in this one? Never seen Withering do that much. I mean, yeah, it's one of the strongest withering techs in the game, and he had anger, so. Angry Kiss might be my favorite thing on this build. Probably still high tier. Yeah, it's like arguably still like broken. There's a reason I haven't banned in the format. Even the pure red. 60% on Joan. Cyclona 28 though. It's been hitting. It doesn't this time though. Gotten two misses too. Angry kiss sounds funny. I won't kiss your wife for free. Even if she's in love with me. Hits the kick. Not enough though. The power cut in two. He gets back up. He doesn't care. They're going crazy. There's the charge. And she's up too. Look at that. Alright. Can't wait for all the speed builds to make people run tanks next time. I know. Plum's gonna win that one. I would like to make a speed a 2997. I really only have Big Beat and Baloney, and Baloney would have done great in this tournament, honestly. But no, I Big Beat lost to a tank. He would have got smoked by that dragon. I just probably wouldn't have lost it around one. A double T slash. I like how for T slash he T poses. Plum takes it. He's moving on. Cavity and Yorm up next. I'm content with Dagon right now. It's funny, he's one of my favorite breeds. Yeah, he's good. Having like 40% chance to hit Cyclone is so spooky. It's so funny that after talking about this today, it turns out that he's not actually like anywhere close to being the optimal Cyclone Golem build. The optimal Cyclone Golem build is probably, um, you know, purebred Golem or uh, like a black Golem or whatever that actually starts in slot four. Okay, prediction is live. Who do you like? Golem, Tyrant, Black Golem. Yeah. Pressure probably starts in the same slot. I don't think pressure adds enough. I'm in Hotep. Yeah, there's quite a few. 81%. That's why you got the diving press. It's true. It worked against the Doug the Dog. Ooh. The cavity. It's got power. Power charge? Good play. Misses it though. Pinch throw miss. 80 guts. Such a big guts lead. Cavity doing big damage. Not enough to hit though. Two misses in a row. The tail ash gonna take it. Yorm moving on to game number two with that win under its belt. Here we go. 
Dying Press Spooky Party Golem. Yeah, 65 force for, what is it, 30 guts? 35 guts, something like that. Spike Bite's gonna take it. We're going to game three. What is that tool again used for Monster Rancher 2 training? The Advanced Viewer? It's 30 guts. It, is it the exact same stat line as uh, Baku's Diving Press? Downside's huge. Well, yeah, of course, but. Where can you get it again? I don't think I have a link to it here. Uh, there's a link in my Discord if you want to go there. Exclamation mark Discord. First prediction you whiffed. Damn. This man's only whiffed one prediction. Can't imagine what that feels like. Um. Okay, our last match of round one is Quiver and Bahamut Zero. Went all in on the wall. Okay. Went wall in. Yeah, there you go. Prediction is live. Who do you like out of these two? These two fine folks. I actually can't believe we're going to be done by midnight tonight. That's wild. Give me time to try and sleep off this headache. And then I get about six hours of sleep. And then back to work. Bakus is weaker. It's Is it like 60 instead of 65? It's the better tech. 58 to 42. Because, yeah, it's more accurate. Ooh, big damage on the Icicle Arrow. Wing combo is 69%. We gotta dodge the Ice Arrows. Them crits are pretty nice. Can't believe uh, Penguin got Ice Coffin, too. That's such a BM pick. Ooh, glide charge. Not enough to kill, but good damage. Now they're in slot one. Bahamut Zero's got a good shot. Hits the bite. There's the grit. 16 hit against... What does the golem have? It's minus 20, right? On the golem. Going to game three. Just like that. Oh, the slamming down miss with anger. That's like the first move the dragons missed. Kill attack miss. It's falling apart. Hits the ice arrow. There's the grit. He's not out of it yet. He's got enough guts to attack. What's he got? The glide charge? The crit? <gasps> oh my god. He does it. He's moving on. God damn. 2 1. What a set. Great set. Suplexi and Lanny Poffo up next. Rocky, yeah, exactly. Okay, prediction is live. Who do you like? What do we got? 71% on Poffo. Big damage. Try that tank, it can't block int moves. 
So at 999 power or uh, intelligence, you're taking the same amount of damage anyway. It's only once they have defense. I guess it does have defense. That's right. This is like the only time that's actually going to make a difference. Ooh, big damage there, but there's the anger. Angry eye beam. One shot. Not building 999 life is always a little bit spooky. 400 damage. Tanks a little bit of it, but uh, Lanny's in a good spot. Kiss is terrifying in this matchup for the Worm. He does not have the gust rate to be able to tank that withering. I beam is also scary just because it's I beam, right? The Kiss finisher. Lanny's taking it. He's moving on. Duo. Next up. Haha, -ha, Epic and Plum. Haga. That <laughs> <I> sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, kind of a tough matchup. Not bad for your first run? No, definitely not. That's a great monster. Rough matchup at the end, but a uh, good monster. Okay. Yeah, if the worm won that one, it would be specifically through critting on uh, suplex. And that's basically it. That's all you have to do. Just hope. Worms can be pretty high. Worms are sick, yeah. Defense ended up costing them in that match, yeah. Seventy percent on plum. Cyclone versus meteor drive. Oh, the drive misses. The double brow hit. Oh. One for each eyebrow, eh? And the cyclone. GG's. That's the set. All right. <laughs> Justin Yorm up next. We got one worm left. Can't believe we had two worms in top 16 in middleweight. That's pretty sick. Worm's got a lot of utility. It's a fun monster. I guess it is a pretty good tank killer, though. That makes sense. Okay, predictions live. Who do you like? Worm might be good. Worm's okay in formats where people don't... Like, it's not great in uh, 3500, where people can tank hits and also be speedy. It's good at one or the other. It's good at taking out uh, monsters with no life. And it's good at taking out tanks, but it's not good at taking out a monster with a lot of speed and 700 life. So it kind of falls off in 3500, which is where we base most of our, um, what do you call it? We base most of our tier lists on. Good day for long term and stream. Top 32 middleweight Golemir. Yeah. just gonna take it can't just wreck a heavyweight speedster yeah it'd be fun to make a tier list for each division yeah I think uh, we'll be working towards that welterweight's not really doable welterweight is just random Ooh, the death slash finally hits just takes game number one Game number two, here we go. Uh, that is a 2-0, right? He hit it the first time, right? I thought I was going crazy. Death Slash too good. It's a good tech. Timothy and Bahamut Zero. Two O, I've read? Yeah, I've heard.
Okay. Prediction is live. Who do you like? This dragon is my brother. <laughs> You're also catching up in points. Yeah, you you're on quite the run today. Okay, what do we got? Fifty five on Timothy. Pretty close. Death thrust versus trample. Ooh, the crit, but he's still in it. Death thrust will kill here. Turn stab definitely not what he wants. A little bit of damage, but not a lot. He's got anger. Into the triple stabs? Bahamut just let him do it. Whatever. Led with his chin. He got smoked. Death thrust opener. Is it going to be enough? It is, but there's the grit this time. Wing attack. And do a little bit. Another one. This is like the exact opposite of last time. <laughs> Turn stab still comes out. Timothy, gonna take it. Moving on. Timothy takes that one 2 0. We got Lanny Poffo and Plum up next. I should say, um, that was what? 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, so every monster who lost there got ninth place. So, congratulations. We are now in top eight losers. It's golem in time. Okay. Prediction is live. Also, you guys have been like really on with the bets today, like. The one you've been betting on the most has been the one that's won like almost every time. There's been like one or two where that wasn't the case, but it's been pretty, you know, you guys have been picking the winners pretty consistently. Eighty nine percent on plum. That'll do it. He technically, like, Poffo technically does have port priority. If they both swing on frame one, he will attack first. So we're going to game three. Yeah, Cyclone, but, uh, what's he going to do? Oh, hits the charge. Doesn't have enough for Cyclone now, though. The slap. How can he slap? He hits it. He's going to win. That was a very quick set. Lenny, get out of there. <laughs> Lenny, not Lenny. Ah, nuts. Well, congratulations, Bob. You get fifth place. Not bad. I think fifth? Or this is top... No, it's top eight. So you got seven. Justin Timothy up next. He almost took two games. He had cheated out of that third game. The grit. Who won between horse and dragon? Uh, horse. Okay, prediction is live. Bob scored a lot. Yeah, Bob's going to get a lot of points today. Sixty five percent on Jest. Oh, the real leg kick's going to hit a little bit of damage. Death smash. Good chunk. He's in the lead. Smash combo, probably not what he wants. Turn stab, definitely not what he wants. 
It worked for him last time, but his opponent's got 99 guts now. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to come back from this. Oh, he's got a reel. We see a grit. We don't. The grit could have run out the reel, and then he would have died anyway, because, you know, his opponent's got 70 guts. Ooh. Smash can do a little bit. Jess already has 99 guts, though. GG's. The Death Slash comes in. Does exactly what Zephyr said he was going to do. And his mon dies. Your points. Rip. Alright. 2 0. That's kind of why we, people normally don't take um, turn stab. Gooby and Plum. It did good for him beforehand, though. So, who's to say? You've been a turn stab hater since Mace Wind, dude. How many sets did that cost you? And that's like a buffed move, too. I'm just buffed in hard mode. Okay, prediction is live. It never hit. And even if it did, it wouldn't do any damage, right? So. How more points today than Zora got fifth place in welterweight? Hell yeah. Not gonna bet anymore, you're gonna sit on your 2.5k. Oh, big. Big spender, look at that, 2.5k. It's almost enough for one animation. 63% on Gooby. The numbers don't lie. I gotta make that a sound effect. But Freya was nice enough to give me uh, the numbers don't lie and the, what is it? I'm justifiably in a position I don't, I don't wanna be in. I got both those sound clips now, but I gotta put them up. Oh, the spike top lands. He grits anyway, he's still there. It was 7k a bit ago? Oh, okay. So, below the 15 point mark? Hell yeah. The kick. He's still in it. Cyclone? You know, I appreciate it. If you're going to go out, go out with style. Gooby's going to win that one too. Oh. All right. Spike Strip and Jest up next. Once we get to like the top, it's like it's always still the best monsters, right? Almost always. Sometimes a weird monster makes it into top 16, but like once you get to like top four, top six even, it's like, you know, it's, you got your best monsters here. Okay, prediction is live. Who do you like? Melon run when that 50 power will do stuff. I mean, it's a thing in welterweight. 60, no, about 56% uh, on jest. Pretty even. Double needle stabs. Got Scythe with anger. He hits him. Jest is going to take it. You know, Stab's doing a little bit. Bob showing us all with low points that you can get a lot of points in a single tournament. It's true. He's, uh... Bootstrap Bob is what they call him. He hits the grit, but just has so many guts. He's gonna miss the Death Smash. The Spike Stabs comes out. We're going to Game 3. Here we go, folks. Oh, spike Bite lands. 
Oh shit! The single hit? That's all it took? Oh my god, all that effort, all that work done just takes it to one. Gooby and Jest up next. At least I have my points now. <laughs> No, it doesn't want to show up here. Come on. There we go. Okay, prediction is live. Who do you guys like? Winner of this, loser of this is guaranteed fourth. Doing great and everything that's not DXPL. That's kind of how I feel right now. Bootstrap Bob is now my Moose Meadow <laughs> server name. Hell yeah. Bootstrap <laughs> Bob is fighting. I'll try to get some points next turn. Macho. That is just mean. He's a mean guy. 95% on Jest. Damn. Gooby came to play, eh? We see another three cubes. We do see another three cubes. He grits, but you know, when you don't have any speed, the grit doesn't matter that much. The spike top gonna finish him off. Gooby takes game number one. Mean man macho over here, yeah. Another three cubes? Oh my god. Bro, this is crazy. Gel came to win. He's doing his best. He's doing exactly what he needs to do to win and gets hit a single time and it's over. Oh my god. Missed out on points two to three times this month? Yeah, you're uh, you're really struggling. He's got real and power. Stab? God damn, dude. I see you're real and I raise you power. Look at that. 33% extra defense, nothing compared to 100% extra power. Gooby, gonna take that one 2-1. Moving into the loser's finals. We got winner's finals up next. We got generic and we got UFOO. Your chips, the Joker gets fourth. <laughs> Gooby is such a good name. All right. Um, so you guys bet wrong there. Very unfortunate for you. Prediction is live. Who do you like out of these two? It says winners finals. Night on is winning games. Yeah, Night on's pretty good in a couple of formats. Specifically this one, and it's okay in lightweight as well. This is its best format, though. Can U defend their winner's placement, or will they snail to protect their title? I hate that. 53% on generic. Violent Shell opener. Good damage, good withering. People actually bet on generic, eh? Violet Shell is a very hard opener for Dragon to come back from. Sure, your last 10 bucks today, but I won 13,000 disc chips, so I'm happy with this result. You know, maybe we could set up a situation where you uh, pay me disc chips. You pay me money and I give you disc chips. Ooh, FOO got trampled there. The Violent Shell wasn't enough. You think it would be. Trample and Retaliation? No crit. No anger from Uwu. Damn, you guys bet right. You guys knew. All along. Generic gonna take that one to OO. We got UFO and Gooby up next in losers finals. Travel's a good comeback mechanic. Yeah, it is. Getting anger after getting hit is uh, the comeback mechanic, though. It's not. Trample's good, but uh, 
anger is what makes it. I don't doubt people asking what is the exchange rate of money to chips. All right. Prediction is live. Who do you like? I like how Generic knocked out Uwu right after I said Violent Shell would be hard to come back from. Yeah, he did exactly what he needed to do to win. That's how Monster Rancher works sometimes. It's very rare that I say the thing that is like exactly wrong. You know, I'm not always right, obviously, but I was exactly wrong there, and that's pretty funny. It's gooby time. We're goobin'. Let's see some uh, pink jams in the chat if you'd be goobin' right now. You got pink jams. You better use them. Hell yeah. 55% on Gooby. Found Shell misses. Oh, the Pierce lands into the gel top. There's the grit, though, and a massive guts lead. This is terrifying. That's a KO. The grit. But UFO still has a huge guts lead. Goes for another spike shell. Didn't need to swing it. Damn. It all came down to who's going to stab first, and it happened to be the gel. Game number two. Tree cubes. Pretty good. To the gel top. Much less good, but gives him anger. Spike shell going to do everything. Spike. It's so funny because shell attack does okay damage. And a decent amount of withering, like a tiny bit of withering. And then Spike Shell, for whatever reason, does like no withering. It like loses all of its withering, and then it comes back on Violent Shell, and you get shit like that. We get a rematch of Grand Finals. Gooby gets third. UFO moves back on up. So our Grand Finals is what we just saw. Generic versus UFO. Congratulations to Gooby. Okay, so that goes to P1. Okay, prediction is live for this. Remember, if you're betting on this one, you are betting for generic to win one set, but you're bet bleh, but you are betting on UFO to win two sets. He has to win, or it has to win, and then it has to win again, because generic hasn't lost a single set yet. This is the last set of the night, potentially. If Generic loses it, we got to do another one. So UFO has to win six games. Generic only has to win three. Obviously, it's, you know, a best of five. And then a best of five. And not necessarily just winning, like, six games spread out. Generic wins three before Uwu wins six is basically how it works. Sort of. Sort of how it works. 70% so far on the dragon. Okay, ends at 64. We got a lot of chips in this one. Here we go. Violent Shell opener. A lot of withering. No anger on Generic. Trample's going to hit, but Uwu is going to have the Guts lead. Will he do anything with it, though? Electric Whip comes out. Is it enough? The crit definitely seals it there. Game two. Ooh, the big crit. The crit is really important because it means that anything Uwu has will kill now. Hits the Electric Whip for four hundo. Two ol. Going to three. No Violent Shell opener this time. We got a Trample opener. Not enough to kill. Violent Shell will bring his guts to zero if it hits, but two Tramples in a row? Damn. Generic. Not out of it yet. Needs two more wins to win this entire tournament. But if he loses this one, 
then he's got to win three all over again. Million whips. No way. The angry million whips missing at 99%. We got a game five. Oh my God. That is terrible. If that's what loses, ooh, the set, that's going to be so sad. Tail attack and do a good chunk of damage. Ooh, has a lot of guts into the trample. I cannot believe it. That's how it went. Oh my god. No way. Well. Well, alright. That's certainly a way to lose a set. That's the selfie special. Oh, that's so unfortunate. I'd be losing my mind. But I mean, I, I guess when you like, you get to that point and you're getting second place regardless, it's like not that upsetting, but still it's like, ah, all those points, all those points just vanished. Anyway, so the dragon wins it. Let's take a look at the final scores. So congratulations to everyone. This was super fun. Um, oh. Generic with the 7 and 0, so he gets the 7 points. Good for him. Plum also gets 7. I don't think anyone else does. Um, so, congratulations on both those monsters getting 2 additional points. Uh, UFO getting 2nd, Gooby gets 3rd, Jess with 4th, Plum and Spike Strip get 5th, Timothy and Lenny Poffo get 7th, Suplexi, Haha, ha, Epic, XD, Yormungandr, and Bahamut Zero all get 9th. There's points for that as well. And Joan of Slash, Quiver, Raving Rabbit and Cavity all get six, uh, 13th, which rounds out our top 16. These are all monsters that get points for placing. Other monsters got points for, you know, beating Division Rivals or beating the the Evil Time Noise, all that fun stuff. But here's what we saw today. Pretty cool. A lot of great matches today. I don't think I've ever been so hyped for a match I lost before. That was that was a great set that um, Spider Crab beat me in. That was a fun set. Super fun day today. Let's go find someone to raid. Because it is not midnight yet. I managed to finish this with eight minutes to spare. It only took four and a half hours. That extra half hour and no betting really, really made a difference. And also not getting sidetracked talking about stuff, you know? We talked about Frank D'Angelo and a bunch of nonsense today, but... Uh, we got all the matches actually done on time. Raid channel. Who's uh, who's streaming? Who can I raid? 